Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Season 2 of the Vertex Stock Car Cup. My name is Chaz Draycott, and alongside me tonight is the fantastic Chris Dawes to start off a wonderful second season here from Kansas Speedway. Chris, we uh, had a fantastic laugh at the 150 event. Uh, sorry, not the 150, the, uh, the Eldora Truck Challenge it was, wasn't it? Uh, just last Friday. It's great to be together for a full season now. It is, and I'm absolutely ecstatic to be doing that. I mean, you've been telling me how entertaining this whole uh, season one was. And, you know, to, to have these things around is one and a half mile oval. To listen to the build up to this, where they're talking about that the tyres will go off, that, you know, they need to be wary at restarts once they do, at, at where the back markers might need to get low so they can go high because otherwise they'll lose. I mean, the, the, the dynamics of this is just incredible. And we nearly exploded on the uh, half-mile dirt track. We're going to go mental for this, I think. Oh, definitely. It's, uh, it's it, you know, the, the strategy that gets involved in these sorts of events as well. Um, it's, it's not just turn left and floor it everywhere. It really isn't oh, that God, simple man. in these things. Um, you have to think about when you're going to take your pit stop. Is there going to be a yellow flag, for example? Are you going to be able to make up some time in the pits? Um, there's so many different things to think about. I, I never really watched that much NASCAR until a few years ago. And when I really started getting into it, I was just amazed by how someone can just think, oh, I'm just going to pit now and might just risk having a yellow flag in a couple of laps. So then I'm on fresh tyres in at the front. And the amount of time people can actually judge that and get that right is pretty, pretty frightening. And I reckon that we're going to see some of these guys do this tonight. Not as big a grid as we had last season, but in a lot of ways, that can be sometimes a bit better. It's a bit more manageable for the guys. We've got a 21 car field for tonight, as opposed to the 43 that we had at Daytona last time. But... That's not any sort of negative reflection on the championship. I mean, Alex and the guys have been putting in a hell of a lot of effort behind the scenes, haven't they? Uh, absolutely. And I mean, at the end of the day, you've got the, or the whole... Oh, some, they're still hitting the wall already in this practice. But, uh, uh, you know, we, we, there's the packages that they're able to do. They've done a great job of Vertex in that, you, you know, you, you enter on a race-by-race -race basis. You can enter the whole season. You can enter a batch of them. Uh, and I think that we're going to have a, a mixture of all of the above in reality. This is the opener for it. Uh, people are probably going to watch it back and, and start entering it. I think we need to make sure we promote this to people to get involved because the entertainment's there. Listening to the uh, the driver's briefing beforehand, that's how professional this is. If you're watching this and you don't know, there is a driver's briefing beforehand and it's all very serious. So the whole thing is sorted and it's managed properly. Everybody knows what to do. And then the fun bit kicks in and the banter that was going on amongst everyone. You were the, uh, the, the grenade thrower, Frankie Chaz, but it was <laughs> brilliant to hear it. So it's that great mix of, you know, making sure it's managed properly, but not forgetting the fun as well. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's it's trying to keep the uh, the entertainment side involved and make sure that just everyone can enjoy it. And that's the main thing. We all want to enjoy sim racing and have a good time doing it. And... For these guys to have such a competitive league and also mix that in is great. So we'll have a quick look at some of the cars. Now, I was talking to him about this beforehand. Aaron Smith, who, of course, won the... <laughs> you weren't the, happy, were you? No, the Eldora <laughs> Truck Challenge was the last time I saw the big yellow bumblebee, as I called it. Now, he said to me he's going to put some more black on the car and a few more bits. And I won't lie, it does look amazing. But I said, oh, it'll be a wasp. And literally within half a second, it was as if he planned that I was going to say that. And he said, oh, yeah, it's going to sting. And yeah. hopefully not the wall, as he said, as he's just about to there. But it's a good-looking car. Uh, we've got Brian Krells coming back as well, the Belgian, for Brax Racing in a very, uh, very lovely American-themed livery with the bald eagle on it. He said he was going to make it nice and pretty for me. And he started speaking about his back end. But, yeah, he's, uh, he's done that. And it's a good-looking car. 
Uh, Marcel Freinsainer, or Frein Freinsainer. Uh, I've still asked him before, and I still get it wrong, in the triple one. Freinsainer, a new livery Zener, which actually means outdoor cracker, if you translate it. There you really go. Is that what you were? Crack crackers himself. <laughs> He's got a nickname already. There we go. Uh, ben Creener, who I'm sure you've obviously got some experience commentating on in real life I as well, actually, Chris. Yeah, I do. Absolutely. I mean, I'm devastated. Coming into J June now is that I'd have been looking forward to the uh, American Speed Fest uh, at uh, Brad's Hatch, which I've been uh, the lead commentator on for the last uh, three, four years. I've lost track now. And it's just such a festival. The Euro NASCAR come to town, which, of course, Alex Sedgwick uh, and Ben Kreener uh, uh, are on that. And it just is amazing. I mean, that said is, of course, we're stateside now. And, and I don't know about you, is that it's on a bucket list to go over and watch one of the big uh, NASCAR oval events as well. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, even if you're not massively there. into it. Oh, sorry, I'm going to follow that on, is that, of course, that's their target, isn't it? Ben Kreener and Alex Sedgwick is that they want to be over there racing in that as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, that's it. I mean, we always say that Alex is our resident American, and he really is. His knowledge of NASCAR and how things work over there and, you know, his passion to get involved with it, hence running this series, it's easy to be seen. And, uh, and you know, having this championship available to him and the guys is just awesome. And I'm really enjoying it. Obviously, I know you're going to enjoy it. You're going to absolutely love this sort of stuff. Um, but the thing is, as well, the guys that are racing tend to get a lot of enjoyment out of it too. We've got one of the cars scraping the wall. That's Jamie Jenkins, who is new to this series as well, by the way, in the number three machine. Which is not the colours that I had noted down, incidentally, I just noticed, although he's disappeared there on me, hasn't he? But, uh, yeah, it's kind of like a wet, white and blue with a bit of green in, wasn't it? So. Yes, we, we might have some of them uh, in different liveries. I have got trading paints on, but i tell you what, everybody, you will see the iRacing overlay for just a moment. There it is, and there she goes. I'm just going to make sure that every single paint is up to date here, just so we've uh, got them all in. I did update them before the session, so Jamie we will use as the guinea pig. These guys are going to go out now for lone qualifying, so, yep, still white, blue and green. Uh, these guys will be on track on their own. As you see here, we'll flick between them, but there will be no one else on track around them. Uh, Tom Selden in the number 13, hopefully not unlucky for him. Uh, Guillaume Hesno in the very... That's different to what we had as well, because I'm down as orange and black, so what was he, blue and white? I think Honestly. you know the the orange and black ones that um, that uh, we had. I think like they were the fault. I think yeah they were the standard eye racing thumbnails. Although he's actually pulled over there as Tom Selden, a bit of a strange one. Uh, Justin Nyer in the stage one racing number seventy seven car. That's slightly different to what he had last season. Look at this slide in around there through three and four. That's brilliant. And we saw that um, well Alex was saying beforehand that these things are really going to be moving around on the surface as well. So he said they're going to be behaving like proper NASCARs. So. I know that you're going to, uh, your tongue's going to be wagging at this one, isn't it, Chris? I don't know what you're suggesting, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you get, you'll get me a reputation at this rate, mate. But, yeah. I'm, I'm, forgive me if I zone out momentarily, is that I'm, uh, I'm writing at the same time, and a man, I can't uh, multitask, you should know that. <laughs> well, we'll have a look at I'm Jason like... Glenn, <laughs> who, for half of last season, we couldn't see the number 55 on the side of his car for some unknown reason. Oh, really? Through trading paints. Yeah, it was just a completely white side of the car. But here he is across the line. Brian Crowell's is fastest at the moment from Alex Cedric, Connor Mills and Aaron Smith. And I'm just well, that's gonna... different for Jason Glenn. You said he's in a red and white car, isn't he? Whereas I had him down as blue and black. Honestly, these guys do it to wind us up, I reckon. <laughs> Oh, Connor Mills has gone second. Of course, the Vertex Stock Car Cup Season 1 champion, Connor Mills, is second to his teammate Aaron Smith at the moment. So 7 and 70 for Revolution Satellite Racing. Now we've got Billy Fletcher out there in the number 88 again for Luxim 24 Esports. Justin Bailey, who we saw before, is new to the championship. Jonathan Hill is one of the guys that was in the Eldora Truck Challenge, and he had a bit of a rough ride in that one, didn't he, Chris? It was a bit all over the place for him. It was, uh, in fairness, um, and, and I think he did. Did he even finish? I'm not sure. Or if he did, he was uh, he was quite a few laps down because he had to go in for quite a lot of repairs, didn't he, sadly? And he was like, basically, he was being bullied, I think is the only way I can <laughs> describe it. <laughs> yeah, you're not, you're not wrong, mate. You're not wrong. Um, James Harvey here for Student Motorsport. Student Motorsport have been a great supporter of this championship from the get-go. Um, James is a very, very lovely guy as well. He's a very talented racer. He's had a lot of mixed results, I'd say in terms of his uh, his championships so far, but it's um, it's a lovely livery, as they've just given a shout-out in the uh, the chat as well on the Simply Race broadcast. Don't forget as well, Luxim24 and Simply Race and Vertex Experience and uh, Vertex Sport Management. Thank you all for being involved. It's 
such a great team effort behind the scenes. The, the WhatsApp group that we've set up between everybody is never ending. There's so much info being passed back and forth. Everyone supports each other so well. And it's uh, really I feel like a diva, unit. to be honest with you, because I just rock up and do talking. <laughs> you guys work so hard in the background, and I'm like, I'm, I'm an artiste, don't you know? <laughs> <laughs> Demanding that you only get red M&Ms behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah. <isn't> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, um, this is Sean Stacey in the number 92 machine. Quite a nice livery on that as well. He's also Revolution Satellite Racing. Um, we've got Alistair Topley making his return to the championship. He's got a different livery this time around as well. Number 41, that's quite a... Uh, a nice old Penske livery that he's got there, I believe. And who else have we got? Adrian Burks is back in the championship as well in his beautiful red machine. I was a big fan of Adrian last season. He was great to watch, very exciting, very quick as well. And he was not scared to make some of the moves that these other guys sort of backed out of here and there. Uh, we've got James Harvey currently eighth at the moment, just behind Ben Creener in the Toyota, number 38 for Luxim 24. Alistair goes up to ninth position in the 41. And it looks like him and Adrian Burks are going to be the last two cars on the track at the moment. So the session will be just coming to an end in a moment. But a great, very quick session there, Chris. I'm surprised at how, uh, how it flies by. But, you know, when it's uh, only a couple of laps around an oval, it does sort of just get done, doesn't it? There's no, there's no messing about with these guys. No sort of thinking, oh, I'll go out at the end of the session when the track rubbers up a bit. It's just get on with it. You're on your own. You may as well crack on. No, absolutely, and that was just uh, was that that was just a, a practice for them. Was that right? Or was that qualifying now? Yeah, yeah, that's that's the qualifying done with now. So was it really? Just yeah. I, last I knew they were practicing. Sorry about that. I lost <laughs> track of what I'm doing. I was so busy updating my notes. That's all Goodness good, mate. Goodness me. <laughs> hey, that's <laughs> what I mean. This is this, it's a prime example. It does just fly by, to be honest. So we will look at the grid for everybody then. We have Alex Sedgwick on pole position then alongside Aaron Smith. Connor Mills and Brian Crowles make up a superstar row two with Guillaume Hesno and Marcel Freinzener on row three. Ben Creener is alongside James Harvey, seventh and eighth, with Alistair Topley in ninth and Jamie Jenkins in tenth. Now it's Billy Fletcher and Adrian Burks on row six, just ahead of Justin Bailey and Jack Mace. Then we have Jonathan Hill and Jason Glenn, Justin Nyer, Sean Stacey, Tom Selden and George Tosma, uh, Tolsma, sorry, round out your top 20. And then we have Jeff Hooper at the back of the grid in 21st. So the boys take to the grid for the very first time then. We go on board here with Alex Sedrick. You can see the pace car just in front, the iRacing, the legendary iRacing Mustang pace car just in front there. And when you're coming into an event like this, Chris, it's quite a scary moment thinking about how much pressure is ahead of you because it is a long race, of course. What do you think these guys will be thinking at this point, just sat in the pit lane while it ticks over a bit? Well, you know, I'm going to keep it real as well in the fact that, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of people that go, well, what, what are you guys talking about? It's, it's sim racing. And I'm going to use the phrase, you've heard me say it, and I've, co I've copied it from someone else, is that the cars aren't real, but the racing is. Yeah. So you might sort of think, well, they're sat in their lounges, in uh, in their box of shorts, eating cheesy watsits or whatever. Are you watching and, me? Uh, it, it, well, that might be true. I don't know. <laughs> but the point being is that these guys, the adrenaline will be up. If we have them wired up in some way, their heart rates are absolutely through the roof. They will be taking this seriously in terms of, uh, of, of race prowess. They will be uh, sweating ollies in a very short period of time as well. And, uh, and, and there'll be fun banter, but there'll be a few times that if they're chatting openly on the mic, they'll be sort of having a pop at each other as well. If something doesn't work the way it should do, someone makes a move. We had that even on the fun event last Friday, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, the, these moves, you know, if people go, through, um, go for a maneuver down the inside or try and send it on someone and it causes contact, tempers do flare. I mean, it's not just a couple of guys sat around having a bit of a laugh this. They do get competitive. They do have fun with it, but... Yeah, the, uh, the race in itself is very, very real. The, uh, the blood, sweat and tears can be genuine. And I mean, it, I, I sort of sympathize with real racing drivers a lot of the time because when I've been in a sim race and, you know, spin out of a good position, I get really angry about it and really upset. Yeah. And you think, you know, you can't just rewind time and make yourself undo it. You've genuinely lost that chance at doing well. And for them to do it in the sim is pretty mad. And you do get really, really emotional about it. But in real life, when you physically make all the travel and the money and the effort, it must be absolute heartbreaking. I couldn't, I couldn't picture it. But 
You can see Alex here in his... Uh, he's in a Toyota Camry this season. He wasn't a Mustang last time around. He's done a bit of painting. He did that himself. Him and Aaron Smith were very, very close competitors with... Uh, oh, it was Donald Walters, I think it was, at the... Um, uh, it, I think it was Walter Donaldson. I can't remember. It was the two names anyway. The uh, the season gets underway then. Cedric puts his foot down. Connor Mills goes with him, the reigning champion. But it's the two Revolution satellite racing cars chasing the Vertex Esports car down towards one and two. And we were hearing him before say that the high line is going to be the one to watch. Jamie Jenkins is gone. Oh, Jamie Jenkins is properly around. Jason Glenn's in there as well. We've got a yellow straight away. Wow, I mean, there was a reasonable chance of that, wasn't it? I know that we were having the conversation is that what they've got to be wary is that on a restart, if they're on a restart in, uh, you know, torrid tyres, then they're, you know, they are going to spin up. But that was in theory, they're on fresh rubber at the minute. And yet they still managed to spin that one up and head up into the wall. And, and as soon as that starts, it's pinball time. Yeah, I think it was uh, oh, it's oh, over. Jack Mace that was going over there. I think it was Adrian Burks who went into, yeah, Adrian went into the side of the number three. That's Jamie Jenkins, newcomer to the series, not having the best of starts. Jason Glenn tried to get out of it, and then the number 92, Sean Stacey, got into the back of him as well. I saw George Tolsman there pretty much stop on the track. Now, Tom Selden got involved in it as well. Oh, actually, he just stopped really, really quickly. I think he's going to pull it over and stop and go back to the pits. He is. But it's a real shame there for the guys. That was... Uh, not the start we wanted for the season, but you know when you when you're coming into a championship and there's a lot of new guys around you on track that you're not sure about who you're racing with, how to approach them, it can happen, can't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they have been putting some practice around here, but of course that's just putting in flying laps, as far as I understand it. Although sensibly they do sort of throw in, but from what I hear, some sort of practice racing to try to recreate this that you see here, but you're still putting that word practice in the driver's heads. Now it's not. There's, there's prizes up for grabs here, for goodness sake. This is the real deal. And, uh, and yeah, just got a little bit overexcited there. And the problem is, once you start spinning that round, you're not grabbing that back again. That's what is so amazing about these NASCAR races uh, in real life, is that as soon as they start going, you can't suddenly opposite lock and, and save it most of the time, can you? No, definitely not. It is uh, it is a big slide. You know, they don't have um, a massive amount of downforce. They are made to be very loose because they want to be as quick as they can at top end. You know, they want to be very, very darty, as I call it. They don't want to be uh, sort of too stuck to the ground because it's extra drag that they don't want. But, um, yeah, when you see some of the guys coming off, I mean, even off any of the corners, really, when they start to just get over a bit of a crest and the track levels out, when the camber isn't really favouring the uh, the banking of the circuit, the cars really do get loose and they wobble around and it just looks absolutely fantastic. It just shows you how much effort these guys have to put in just to get around a lap, even if the car does get sideways. It's uh, certainly an exhilarating experience driving these things. If you haven't driven them before, anybody watching, by the way, and you are on iRacing, just grab one of these cars. These are now free. These are the legacy Xfinity cars that are no longer used in real life and iRacing do the very generous thing of making them free for people to use and they are such a barrel of laughs. I mean, you can chuck them around road courses as well. There are road setups available. And as you probably know, Chris, you know, the real life NASCAR guys go to Watkins Glen. Chucking one of these things around there is a hoot, a proper hoot. It's not a word I use often because I think it makes me sound camp as you said I did in the uh, Eldora <laughs> Truck Challenge. But honestly, We're it dying. is a hoot. <laughs> <laughs> a barnstormer uh, That'll do. absolutely i mean you know again when i get to uh, you know watch the euro nascar going around the uh, the brands hatch indie circuit you know a massive pack i mean what do we have over 30 of them possibly over 40 i'm trying to remember now uh, and just absolutely incredible what they were able to do and uh, uh it isn't there's a lot more to these cars however the great thing is there's equally there's no tricks there's no gizmos there's no um technology that's going to save you they are the, the word we use when we're describing them on the commentary is they're agricultural oh yeah yeah they, they are very much it's drivers all about cars. The driver isn't it yeah and that's that's one of the beauties of nascar you know i mean it does get some stick obviously from the guys in like formula one or gt racing because it's like oh it's just driving around in an oval really fast there is such an art to keeping the momentum, making sure that the car behaves itself. And it's down to thousands. I mean, you see it in the Indy 500 as well. When they have their qualifying for a week, if you go down like the top 20 in that, it's like two decimal places to yeah. like the average mile an hour that they're doing. It's unbelievably close. And that's why you get it in NASCAR as well. And this format, it, it promotes 
the versatility of the drivers because we obviously go to road courses and we go to ovals as well. So these guys have to have a real mixed bag of talent to be able to drive these cars, not just quickly turning left, but also some right-handers as well and some bumps and curbs. And it's really, really does bring the series alive. And I think Vertex have done a good job with it because, I mean, last season, as you might have seen, we had an incredible race, probably the race of the season at Zolder. And I'm, I'm expecting more of the same this time. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know what to, uh, to, to expect from, this, uh, from these drivers because uh, I've not seen it. And, and we've got such a, an age range as well, haven't we? And we've got uh, some that are, uh, are actually drivers, some that are mechanics, some, I don't know about this one, whether we've got, normally we've got like photographers in it and all sorts of things. And it's such a great opportunity to be able to pitch everyone at, at different levels. And in fairness, you know, you can't turn around and say just because, I don't know, say Alex Cedric and Ben Creener, they are pro drivers officially in, in the real world. It doesn't always translate into sim racing. Now, these two, it does, to be fair, they are blooming good at this as well, just to make us sick. But um, it, uh, <laughs> it doesn't always translate, does it? And that's what I love about this whole sim world. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, you know, it's, it's the experience that comes with the racing can sometimes be translated one way. And we've seen people that are really good sim racers get into a real drive in real life. Adrian Burke's here just on the outside of the number 84, which is Jonathan Hill. Jonathan in the Revolution Satellite Racing Car. A couple of their guys out tonight as well. They currently have two of them in the top three in the form of Connor Mills and Aaron Smith. Of course, reigning champion Connor Mills in the number seven. And we were hearing Alex say before, Chris, that the top line is going to be the favoured one tonight. And it's, well, with how close Connor just got to that wall, you wouldn't think so, would you? Uh, no, absolutely. And yet the great thing is, is that they are able to go down below the line. It's not a super speedway, so they've got the freedom to do what they want, as long as, uh, contrary to what one or two tried to suggest, it can't be the pit lane. Um, but they've got, uh, you know, a, a largely speaking, go anywhere if it works. And, you know, once the tyres start getting a bit questionable, then... You know, they, they might not want to go quite so close to the wall, but at the moment they're on that fresh rubber and it's just, you know, grip it and rip it and uh, and see what they can do. But you know, they're, they're sat there in the slipstreams and uh, and suddenly trying to come out of it. And, and you, already I'm finding it intriguing that we are finding a few sort of straying from automatically sitting at the top line. And we've got the move there from Ben Creener. He's decided enough's enough. That's past Krause that oh. he's decided, oh, and he's running up high. And there was just a little bit of a love tap there that's unsettled him. And it means that Krause actually just gone and lost two places because through has gone, uh, I think that's Fryan's uh, Senheuer. <laughs> that's that's just calling that's just calling friend Sennheiser. Um no, nah, he he knows. He, he tried to help me out with the name before and he, he doesn't mind that much. He was a good sport yeah. about it. Oh we've got George Tolsmer off the circuit. That's not the line, Goodness boys. Me. Wow, that's uh, it, they've turned it into a rally cross track. This isn't Daytona, lads. It may be a tryover, but it certainly isn't. Let's have a uh, quick look what happened there. We're not going yellow. George is at the top. Jack down the inside there. That's a 79 of Jeff Hooper. George goes for the middle. Jack comes up. Oh, George comes down, actually. Oh, wow. They do well to keep it in a straight line, though, don't they? They do, yeah. Jack Mace. Uh, does, does, does his mum know he's here? Um, <laughs> he listened to him in the interview. And I say that because he was happily going, I'm half your age, you lot. <laughs> he was, to be fair. He's taking it to the big boys, though, anyway, this, because yeah. he's a very, very young racing driver, but he's talented in these things. And he's been showing that. It was just a shame he got caught out in the incident at the start. This is the battle for the lead, though. And, well, I mean, Aaron Smith was quick in the, uh, the last season, but that win at Eldora has really uh, brought him alive even more here, hasn't it? Well, in the interview after the uh, the victory in Eldora, he was saying that he was determined to carry this speed into this as well. Totally different discipline. He's looking up the inside. He's gone very low there. Alex Edwards kind of parked it in the middle somewhat there until we start getting to the bank. He's not going fully high there, but he's kind of almost teasing him, saying, there's half a car's width. You can have a little goosey gander up the outside there. And of course he's not. So Alex is just able to sit on his line, but his mirrors will be absolutely full of the yellow and back the black wasp just behind him number 70 Aaron Smith desperately trying to I, I think he's basically just trying to pressurize Alex into a mistake I don't know whether that's possible <laughs> he's like play it cool trick play it cool yeah Alex is good at soaking up the pressure to be honest he's uh, he's dealt with enough of it in real life in these sorts of races as well but you know Aaron he is not just the resident American like Alex is he is actually an American and he's the highest one in the race at the moment Justin Bailey is second in the uh, the, two, the three Americans that we have in the race tonight in 13th position we've got Ben Creener and Guillaume Hesno just swapping places behind Ben's actually making good progress here and he did say to me that he does like an oval 
but um, he has a bit of mixed results when it comes to them. So he's cleared uh, Freinzener, and he's just trying to get past Guillaume Hesno, who's another one that has shown real pace last season. And he unfortunately missed out on, I believe it was a top three in the championship in the last round. I think Billy Fletcher took that away from him right at the death. But, um, yeah, Guillaume's doing well for Red Face Racing. Hopefully he won't be left Red Faced after this. But we've got more battles going on behind as well. Look at this, Adrian Burks, Jonathan Hill and James Harvey swapping places. That is Hill down the inside. And it's just getting closer and closer. And the thing is, we're not going to see these fi this field spread out too much because... Despite some of the guys starting to run away, the battles do develop in the midfield because everyone just gets a different pace over the course of a run, don't they? Uh, of course, and they're always acutely aware that uh, a yellow could be dropped out at any moment. It's going to bring them back together. I'm trying to remember now, what was the note that said uh, that the, the expectation is that the tyres will last probably 20 to 30 laps is, is the expectation, I think they were saying. And, you know, that's not a lot in this, uh, what were we talking, a 100-lap race, one and a half miles each time, hence the 150. See the mass there? Good quick mass, that, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, the, it, the point being is that uh, it, it's just going to change the dynamic dramatically. James Harvey there in the student motorsport. I know student motorsport very well. JP, uh, a good friend of mine, and uh, great to see their involvement in this. And as you say, James Harvey, uh, a, a good lad, and... Uh, He's been looking forward to this. He's been bigging it up, and he's sat there at the moment uh, in... Uh, where did he go there? Oh, 11th place, sorry. In 11th <laughs> at the minute, yeah. yeah. In 11th as it stands at the minute. But, you know, the, the, the great point being is he's still there able to pounce back. He's fended off the attention of... Uh, behind him was uh, Jonathan Hill in the 84 car. He's no longer applying the pressure. If anything, Hill's dropping into the uh, clutches of the 49 orange and black car of Baby as it stands at the moment. Yeah, it's, um, well, it looks like something out of a Reese's Pieces packet, but he's closing in <laughs> at the moment. Is JB Racing's Justin Bailey, the number 49. And a lot, you know what? I really like the simple liveries on these things. It doesn't have to be over the top. It just works because the cars look nice and bulky. And, you know, I'm a fan of a Tim Top racing car, so it just works. You know, a simple solid colour is always good. Just behind as well, Jamie Jenkins is putting the pressure on Jeff Hooper. 14th position just behind them is Jason Glenn in the 55 towards the back of the field we've got George Tolsma just behind Jack Mace we saw these pair battling before and I think Jack may have a bit of damage but George is really putting the pressure on here isn't he he is massively and I was about to say the uh, the, the the car that we were looking at a second ago uh, the number three car of Jenkins he was involved in the uh, the early shenanigans uh, dare I say, I did, uh, and uh, and he's just he's obviously shaken off the frustration there because he straight away embroiled in the three car fight there and got himself up into 15th place. Although it looks like uh, the 55 car of Glenn is is trying to line up something, but he just went a little bit too high there and scrubbed off that speed as he skittered along the wall. Didn't do himself too much harm, but you just know that it's going to have rubbed off a little bit of the momentum by the time he gets onto the the flatter straight again. Yeah, it's, it's so easy to try and overcommit to these corners. And like I said, it's all about the uh, the momentum. Guillaume Hesno has just got past Connor Mills, by the way, who's dropped down the order quite considerably. What has happened there for Connor Mills? Let's have a ganders. Oh, he's hit the wall and he's hit it hard and he's hit it again. Wow. Oh, he's done a bit of self-crashing there as Connor Mills. Look at it wiggling down the straight. Honestly, it's trying to get away from him like a tax return, that thing. It's all over the place, but he's managed to keep it on the circuit. But that now means Guillaume Hesno is in third position. Jamie Jenkins and Jeff Hooper are still swapping places further down. Jamie just coming up slightly there. Still side by side. You can hear the rev difference between the two cars as well. And just the speed difference that Jamie's lost by going on that inside line. And here comes Jason Glenn. Showing off that you get to hear the ending noises there. I don't get that. <laughs> you know, no need to rub that one in. But yeah, at the moment, Jenkins just locked out to the uh, 55 car of Glenn. But now Jenkins going to try towards the inside. Thinks better of it, so gets himself back up into that high line to get himself in the slipstream, realizing that the challenge isn't on. And he probably, looking at that gap that's there now, he maybe sort of made that decision, I would suggest, factionally too late because he's just dropped back. I think he's possibly kind of got away with it in fact you've got the two that were working together punching an even bigger hole in the air ahead of him so it is just sort of hopefully for his sake sort of, sort of sucking him back in again to that uh, to that fight but yeah it just uh, he, he kind of tried to go for the lunge up the inside and he suddenly has got himself in that slipstream of the two cars ahead of him and that's the beauty is that whilst the uh, 55 car of uh, glenn was trying to sort of get the slipstream on the car 
it's great news for the third, third car behind them because he's got the double whammy. Not quite managing to make it work, but it means he's just there in his mind. He's just registering that, isn't he? Thinking, OK, I, I can see what I can do. Yeah, he knows that he can get the run on them if he just plays it safe. The thing that he has to consider, though, is if he does get that run and that slight overspeed, the next time he goes into the long left-hander, he's obviously going to be really, really quick into there, and he has to adjust his line accordingly, and he may overshoot it. It's easy to do. We've got Alex Cedric still leading the way at the moment. He has got a gap of just over half a second there to Aaron Smith behind him. Guillaume Hesno is here in third place. Just behind him, Ben Kreiner and Marcel Freinzainer, or Freinzainer. We've said about nine different variations of his name tonight, but we can be forgiven. Marcel is a good sport, though, trust me. Um, I, I like that car, you know, the sort of pastel colours on it. it. It looks really, really quite smart with that pattern on as well. Yeah, talking about pastel colours as well, you've managed to, to camp that as well. I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got a change behind, different change of subject. Billy Fletcher down the inside of uh, Brian Crowles, who's going to carry the speed around the outside for Brax Racing. And we've got a yellow. We've got a yellow. Jamie Jenkins <laughs> causing that one. Just missed that in the corner of my screen. What's happened here? Oh, he's going to kiss the wall, and that is a proper self-crash. Well, you know, was that down to, the, to what you were explaining? Oh, oh goodness oh, me, that was close, oh, wasn't it? Wowzers. Um, but, and, and in fact, I think it's freaked out uh, Niger as well. Or no, what did he say? It is? Naya, Naya. Naya. Let's, Naya. Have, let's go on board and have a, a bit of a, what do you call it? A poopy yeah. pants moment. Yeah. <laughs> Him. Wow! And it did, but I don't think we saw any contact. I think that he was kind of almost expecting that to happen, though, wasn't he? I mean, it was that close, but I'm sure from the uh, when we were outside, it, did, it looked like he just missed him, didn't it? I, I would have thought so at like first. I, honestly, if I, if I was just in at that point, I would have been unbolting my rig with there and there, and I would have been taking the wheel off the desk and just Ooh. saying, no, I'm done, boys, you know, <laughs> see you later. I am well, absolutely there you go, 24. 24 laps in, as we were saying, is that uh, we were talking, what was it, 20 to 30 laps we're going to get out of these tyres. So at 24, uh, yellows are out, so it makes sense that they're going to dive in and take on new rubber. Well, it's the perfect time for him to do it. Look at Aaron pushing Alex down the pit lane. He's saying, <laughs> come on, sunshine, get in that box. Go on, I'll race you. <laughs> I'll race you, I dare you. Overshoot it, go on. Here they go then. We'll see him coming through. And who's going to light it up on the exit? It's going to be a race off pit road, isn't it? You can just see it, sense it. It's coming. <laughs> just love it. They come in. We can see a few flicking to pit exit. And I think Alex has just about managed to pull that one off. He has. So he, he keeps off the attentions of, uh, of Aaron Smith. And he was determined. And he's going high as quick as he can. But he's got to accept that now that they're out there, they've got to settle into those positions. But he, he tried everything he could, didn't he, there? Oh, yeah. You've got to really, really push it. You've got to push your luck in the pits. That's the thing. These things don't have pit lane speed limiters, so you have to be very careful about what you do. You've really got to have your throttle control on point down here, but Alex has done that fine. Aaron did put him under pressure, though, but unfortunately not enough in this case. However, we are a quarter of the way through this race, and these two are the only two, unless you count Sean Stacey, that haven't actually changed position. We'll show you the gains on the left-hand side of your screen, everyone. You can see just how everyone has moved. And it's a very impressive eight places for Jeff Hooper. So he is currently the biggest mover in the field. The rest of them are four or less. Billy Fletcher, Adrian Burks, Jason Glenn, they are the ones that have gained four. Billy's not been on screen much tonight. The uh, Luxim 24 eSports driver, he was third in the championship last season. The eventual championship winner just ahead of him there. Brian Crowell's finished second in the championship, I believe. He's down in ninth place there. And his Stars low. and Stripes. And there is someone definitely going down low. I think it's Jack Mace actually coming. No, Jack Mace isn't going Tom down. Tom Seldon. Tom Seldon. It is indeed. You're better. You're better at this than me. Um, yes, uh -huh. unlucky 13 at the moment. I'm afraid down in 21st position. But fingers crossed he can get back up the order as the race goes on. He might be giving a wave around here. But the field at the moment. I think, well, just in Naya, just getting out of the way a little bit there of everybody as they sort themselves out and get into order. But quite well, the race gone, though. Interesting big losers there is uh, is two uh, heavyweights in uh, in Connor Mills and Ben Crowles, uh, sorry, Brian Crowles, uh, that they've lost three and five places respectively down to sixth and ninth. You know, I mean, it, it, obviously it's no big deal. They're still in, in the hunt. And, of course, we've got Harvey in, a, uh, Harvey in a student motorsport number 40 car. He's, well, I say he's gone down to 11th. He was in 11th when we spoke, so he'd obviously moved up somewhere. But according to the screen there, is he's lost three places. Is that, I, I think I can see that correctly. I've got blurred screen here at the minute. Yeah, he's, um, 
he, he has certainly lost a few. And to be honest, I was expecting him to stay a bit further up there as this went on. But yeah, out of the people that um, that have dropped, they are quite a big surprise, to be honest. But it just shows how easily it can be done, you know. Start of the exactly. race with all these battles and, going and on. But isn't it exciting that it's those heavy hitters that have got themselves, that have just lost out. They're clearly lining up. I think we've got a restart coming soon because they're going to be trying to get themselves uh, through and we know they're capable of it. Indeed, it's, uh, it's just how they take their opportunities, where they make the moves and what they do. So we'll see. Alex has gone up high, so he wants to make sure that he's got that high line. Aaron Smith is going to really push him all the way, though. And it's going to be great to see whether we can see... Franzena come through as well, or Hesno, both of them very talented drivers. And it's, well, quarter of the race gone, what do you reckon so far then? It's been quite uh, quite dicey, but controlled at the same time. It's been a mix of both. Well, yeah, I mean, we had the early yellow and we've had this, but we had a good chunk of running in between. And if anything, it was almost, someone would say it was deliberate because it was around tyre change necessary time <laughs> that we got the yellow. Uh, the cynic in me coming out there. <laughs> He thought, hey, yeah, boys, watch this. I'll go do some grass tracking for you and get the yellow out. There you are. You can all... It, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Cedric puts his foot down, then gets away. Catches Aaron Smith napping, but Franzain is not there to go with him, you know. He's actually hung back as well. Ben Crean has come through. Mm. And down in the fact, inside... I think we saw Franzena just make slight contact with the wall on the outside, but now Aaron Smith's under massive pressure... Uh, for that second, but didn't quite work out. Now, this is interesting because we were watching on Friday around the uh, half-mile dirt track uh, that uh, Aaron Smith is incredible off the starts, isn't he? And Alex was probably fully aware of that, and uh, he had to go as early as he possibly dared. And, and you'll notice that even doing it spot on, he's not managed to pull out any kind of lead, and that's got to be demoralising for him. Yeah, definitely, that's the problem. I mean, you see it on super speedways, you don't always want to be the car at the front because you're the one with everybody piling in behind you and trying to push you along. And Alex right now is going to be feeling that sort of pressure because he knows that everyone behind him is in the slipstream and he knows that Aaron is a very clever racer. Aaron is so controlled in what he does, his approach to it is very, very cool. He just keeps himself calm and collected. Uh, we've got a couple of changes a bit further down. James Harvey, Adrian Burks, we've also just got behind there. Jonathan Hill, Jason Glenn has come through the middle. Jason Glenn is actually just ahead of Alistair Topley. Jay goes down to the inside. We've got James Harvey at the top. Look at how close these boys are. That was almost contact between Topley and Jonathan Hill. Manages to somehow get away with it, though. But Topley was very, very quick last season, but he's not really lit the, uh, lit the timing screens up here. He's actually four places down on where he started. I reckon he can do better. We've got Kreener and Hesno, 38 and 68, changing places again for the final podium spot. Ben is up three spots so far after a bit of a uh, lower qualifying than he was expecting. But putting the pressure on, and, and I mean, you've seen it before, but Ben is so aggressive on track, isn't he? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, he really was properly aggressive on Friday around the dirt track, and he's doing it back on here as well. And, uh, you know, we saw him when he was the, uh, the youngest driver taking part in Euro NASCAR at... 16 years old I mean how do you do that for goodness sake at 16 he's a phenomenal talent and he's out there being aggressive now desperately trying to find a way to get into the podium position but Hesno is uh, is having none of that and he's going to make sure and we saw actually Hesno was equally uh, rough and ready wasn't he on Friday coming down from the uh, the high line down low very very quickly and I wonder whether uh, Ben's going to be possibly slightly wary of that as he looks towards the inside he is going to have a little sneaky snifter towards the inside thinks better of it gets back in the slipstream oh no again he's going for it now he is he's sort of like suddenly trying to catapult himself up the inside i think he's lost it and he's gonna to have to drop back in behind looking at that because you can just see it fading slots in behind again all the while this is allowing the uh, car just behind of connor mills who has moved his way back up into fifth place now in that number seven car um, very distinctive livery, isn't it? With these sort of like almost a luminous pinky purple colour on it that the, the team have. Yeah. And uh, it's just, just fabulous, that one for me. And uh, it is enabling him to close in on these two. And we've seen it before is that the two punching the, the hole together ahead of him is just going to absolutely suck him into that fight as quickly as possible. But we also saw with Jenkins is that it can then throw you into the wall because you arrive a lot quicker than you're expecting into the banking. Yeah, definitely. It's very easy to forget about that, if I'm honest with you. I mean, even on road courses as well, the amount of times you can slipstream someone if you're at a circuit like Monza and then not break early for the chicane. And you think, why have I done that? And then by the time you've thought that, you're already in the wall anyway and yeah. that's it, race over. Even around here, obviously, you're doing more speed. You're not scrubbing off as much, but 
every single corner is so, so quick around here. I mean, we'll just show the dashboard in the bottom right. They're still doing 260 Ks almost around here, going up to 270 on the exit. It's just frightening speed as Karina pops out then down the inside of Guillaume Hesno. He's going to try and get down the inside of the Frenchman, comes back up high, makes sure that he uses all of the road. But he's going to be having a bit of a slower run up the inside. He's going to wow. come up wide. Hesno's going to get the cross back, and you know what that is, don't you, Chris? What do you call them? The switcheroo. The switcheroo. <laughs> There's nearly contact on exit, but Hesno makes it. Great bit of uh, wow. great bit of driving there. Very well judged, wasn't it? It was. I mean, that looked like that was signed, sealed, and delivered by Ben Kreener, to be fair. It was a fabulous move. Um, but he, I, I can only assume it just then sent him that little bit too hot into the corner, and, uh, and he wasn't able to scroll up in enough speed. Um, to, to just stop, stop Hesno coming back at him. And now he's the one that's the sitting duck. Connor Mills is sat there, desperately trying to come back at him. And he can see these two. I mean, he's, he's definitely not taking the watching brief, is he? Sometimes you see people that go, right, these two are going at it so hard. I'm going to sit here and pick up the pieces. He isn't. And there goes Ben Creener again, up the inside. He's going to try and pull it off. He's going high. Is he going to take them both out? No, that's scrubbed off the speed. Connor Mills now trying to look for the inside. Ben Creener suddenly went to try to uh, stop that. And Connor Mills, he has. He's been the silent assassin there. And he's moved up one past Creener. His next target is Hesno. And Hesno's just going, guys, leave me alone. Yeah. He's thinking, can I just not get a podium in some peace, boys? Come on, <laughs> rein it in, lads. But that was really well judged from Connor Mills. You know, he kept the momentum up. I think Karina got a little bit sideways through three and four, and it just upset the car. It seemed like a very minor slide, but, you know, a slide's a slide. Just looking a little bit further down the order, we've got a good battle here, actually, just behind them, between uh, Frein Zayner, Krauls, and Adrian Burks, just trying to all get a bit of momentum on each other, try and get the slipstream running. But you can just see even the different lines that these boys take each single corner and how they all seem to stay the same gap apart. That's what I love about this sort of racing. It's just there's so many different ways of doing it, but you gain thousands that really aren't visual to us unless it's a big mistake or a big send. Oh, look at that. The front, that's mighty close. I was about to make the comment that actually the fight was so hot between Hesno, Mills and Creamer in third, fourth and fifth that it was enabling that gaggle of four cars to, to close in on them. So the next minute... We're going to have a seven-car train at the, as it stands at the moment. They're sensibly not fighting with each other. I don't know whether that's deliberate or not um, between uh, Fletcher, Freisenheyer and uh, Krauss. In fact, Burks just got past Krauss now. But uh, So contrary to what I was saying, uh, they weren't fighting, but they were managing to reel it in to be a seven-car train. What is not a multi-car train is these two. It's just two. The two of them have put, pulled away. Now, this is where I would imagine that Aaron Smith is going to be frustrated because I, I bet he's looking ahead and seeing Alex Cedric just on rails. Now, is he going to stay on those rails once those tyres start getting squirrely? Yeah, it's, it's possible, you know, and he's going to really frustrate the American. Yeah, it can get very frustrating. The real frustrating. American, I mean. <laughs> yeah, not the resident <laughs> British American. Um, it can get very frustrating when you sat behind a car like this, but I think at this point, Aaron's knowing that They've got a two-second gap over the cars behind. Around a circuit like this, that is a very sturdy gap. That's a comfortable, comfortable gap to have, especially when you know that the boys behind you are fighting. He's just running his race. He's letting Alex do what he wants to do. There's no point in pushing it now and forcing the issue for the pair of them, not even halfway through the race. And like I said before, he's very calm and collected about what he does. He's going to be thinking this through. Every single corner, he's just going to keep it stable and think, no need to push, no need to put Alex under any pressure, cause any incidents, slow the pair of us down. We can open up this gap. They're gaining about a tenth of a second a lap at the moment over the guys behind. And they're doing a great job. You know, they're, they're securing a really good result here, providing nothing else happens. A little bit of a wobble there, as I say, that from Aaron Smith. So clearly the commentator's curse is knocking on the door a little bit there. So what we'll do... Wait, don't drag us all into it. That's the Chaz curse, all right? Not, we're not yeah. all going down in flames with you. That's true. Well, the, ch the Chaz curse <laughs> is if I go and do something like this and then look at Connor Mills. In the background now, Aaron Smith will be in a fireball and up the catch yeah. fence and everything. <laughs> the curse with me is you look away and then whoever you were just looking at gets struck by lightning or an aircraft lands on them or something. It's but some... that's why this racing is so incredible, is the fact that that is actually possible. There is stuff going on all the way through this field. So if you're contemplating getting involved in this, guys, to race, do it. Jump on, for goodness sake. It's fabulous. The production you're seeing that, that Chaz is putting on and uh, that Vertex uh, facilitate, and it is their championship. Uh, you know, get involved. A little bit of contact there, a little bumping and boring, yeah. but uh, that actually unsettled Connor more so. And here comes Ben Creener. This is why I backs up my point. Get involved. This racing is great. Did I see going towards the inside? Hesno, he did. He suddenly dived towards the infield. 
He's, he's got away with it, but it has unsettled him enough. That must have just been a wild moment there. Yeah, it must have been very scary as Hesno Ooh. gets out of shape again. Billy that Fletcher's going right. to come through. No, something's been upset by that contact, definitely. You can see it's wobbling even there. Oh, Crean has come up into Fletcher. That was really, wow. really poor. Oh, Ben just didn't have his... He wasn't even looking. Adrian Burks has just got very out of shape and saved it. But Ben just came straight up to the top there. I think he must have thought he was clear. Whether he's got his spotter on or not, I don't know, but... Yeah, I think the problem was is that that was a car he hadn't been involved in a fight with, isn't it? It suddenly got involved there. Oh, and he's just Ooh. gone high, not aware that he was there, in my mind. He was looking too hard at uh, Hesno. You know what? Let's just go on board very quickly. I think it got out of shape. Look, it's... Yeah, it, it got yeah, out of shape. Wow. Tiny, tiny little wobble. Um, Although the latter part of the wobble, don't forget, was making contact with the car on the outside. So he's just sort of like gone out a little bit uh, uh, wide there, made a little bit of contact with the rear corner, and then it suddenly spun him into it. So six of one half a dozen of the other there. But, uh, uh, you know, I think he was probably more aware of Hesno than Billy Fletcher because Billy came from nowhere, didn't he? Yeah, I think it just watched, as he goes over the white line, it just digs in, the right wheel's dug in, and then it just, I think he wanted to just gradually turn into it. And then obviously the car just... Uh, washed up and don't forget the that. second part of that movement was the car on the outside of him that caused oh yeah that. oh definitely can yeah on, can we go on a replay actually with uh, uh billy fletcher because that will give us a good insight i don't know whether that's doable yeah let's uh let's go on board and i'll tell you what we'll do as well let's see if we can here we go you can't really tell it's out of shape you can see it does make a sudden move over to the right and then yeah that tap is all it needs and in these cars as well it can happen so so quickly you can't even realize yeah. it can you it's just a slight washout, wasn't it? Took him into Billy Fletcher's car. Uh, Billy did well to sort of keep that on the straight and narrow there, didn't he? Yeah, indeed. And uh, Frenzena is one that's going to have seen this coming. And it was a hell of a dodge from him because Ben Crean, don't forget, hits the outside wall. He scrapes along the wall and just misses it by inches, does Frenzena. And Diving in the pits, by the way, I've noticed as well now, unsurprisingly. <laughs> yeah, we've got another absolute field day in the pit lane here Sedgwick and Smith retain their position <laughs> very smooth once again who's going to be third out is it going to be Hesno it is Fryn Zayn at fourth Burke's fifth Connor Mills sixth place now he's back down Topley is up to seventh wow he's done well hasn't he now? Fletcher was fourth coming in there he's actually come out in eighth as well and you've got Justin Bailey and Jason Glenn around that top ten Jack Mace is actually up three places from where he started now, especially after the earlier incident. That's a good drive so far. Jeff Hooper has gained his ninth place of the race at the moment, so he's doing a smashing job in the uh, number 79 car for E30 Motorsports. Doesn't look like anyone else has had any issues after that. It was just Brian Crowles that's, uh, that's further down the order at the moment, unfortunately. I think Brian got involved in the contact afterwards mm -hmm. with that other one, so bit of a shame for Brian. I know he's got a very, very big uh, a big fan base in the YouTube chat. A lot of the guys from Brax Racing are very fond of him. He's a very much uh, loved guy in the community, let me tell you that. Just had a bit of a blip of the internet there. Apologies, everybody. Fingers crossed no more of that because Chance's internet has been his best <laughs> friend over these last few days. Let me tell you. The amount of broadcasts that are split in half. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I noticed that, yeah, it's interesting to see that, uh, that Jack Mace up to 11th place there and he's away from the, uh, the car that they just couldn't break away from each other for a good while. George Tolsma, uh, and uh, it looks like Tolsma's down to, I think I saw him in 21st or something. There he is in 21st. Um, and, and so it just means that uh, at the moment, now that Jack's able to just focus on his own race instead of a... Uh, a torrid love affair that was going on on our, on our camera screens there. But uh, he's now picking his way through the field, isn't he, in that 84 car? To be fair. Uh, sorry, not 84. Uh, where's Mace? Where's he gone? Oh, that's because you've gone uh, down a bit further. Is that uh, he's, he's now sort of gradually picking his way back through in the 36 car. And, uh, and, and I think he could probably come on even further. Well, yeah, that's for sure. The, the fact that there's so long of these races to go, even at the halfway point, you have to just get your head down and crack on, really. I mean, you've seen a lot of the time that people in longer races always say, oh, let's just, you know, everyone take it easy. Everyone uh, everyone think it's a long race. Before you know it, though, everyone's sending it into turn one, causing a big accident, and then blaming everyone else. So uh, it's, <laughs> it's easy to throw that out the window when you get into the heat of the moment. But yeah, I think these guys are doing a good job at the moment, and the top two especially, the only guys that haven't changed position from where they are, They've controlled the pace, and, I mean, 
not that I'm biased in any way, but it'd be a shame for someone else to win it after the controlled drive these guys are put in. But we're not even halfway yet, Chris. So what am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, the point being is that we've seen how much can happen, both uh, in the race when we go in, and, and compliments to the guys is that we've had a lot of green flag running, haven't we? And hopefully that's oh, yeah. not the Chaz curse. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, we have had some, some good amounts of running. We're about to go green again by the looks of it. Um, but even on, when they've gone into the pits, we've had all sorts of uh, jiggery pokery going on that has, has messed it up even more. And that's what we want to see. Yeah, definitely. It adds more strategy and more thought processes into the race. You can't just go for it solidly round and round and round. You have to sort of take a moment, have a breather, get your pit stop right. And it's an extra challenge. You know, some of these guys trying to keep it on the pit limiter find it more difficult. But we're going to go green now. Alex is ready to drop it. I don't mean the race lead, I mean his right foot. And I tell you what, Aaron Smith has matched him there, hasn't he? Aaron's done a beautiful job. He stays just with him but he can't quite keep the run because he's on a tight line. Guillaume Hesno is going to go with him as well in third place, just behind the pair of them. Then it's uh, Fran Zayner and Adrian Burks has come up to fifth place. And supposing that he sort of caused that uh, first incident, he's actually got away with it and done all right. Alistair Topley, I was saying before, it's a shame to see him that far down. He's come up now and is doing a fine job, but we've got another one because Brian Crowles is off at the back. So it was, it was a jazz curse. Oh, he's just been tipped there, and he? he just got caught. And uh, he was riding the bucking bronco all the way in towards the corner there. And he, oh, is he going to get missed? <laughs> yes, he is. Just about. Goodness me. That was uh, absolutely incredible. But, yeah, if, if you just... Yeah, he just got tipped on his rear corner. It's unsettled him enough now, hasn't it, that it's just no recovery from that point, is there? No, definitely not. I would have given Brian Crowell's 10 iRacing dollars if he would have saved that because that was properly, <laughs> properly out of shape. I'm just trying to see who it was that hit him. I think it was the 92 of Sean Stacey. We'll just have a, uh, a quick look back. Let's go to green flag. Just have a quick look at Sean. I think he might have just run up a little bit too wide as the uh, as the trioval finished and it straightened out. Let's have a quick check. He's in the black car on the high line just in front of Brian Crowles in the blue machine. Brian sticks to his rear along there. Yeah, Sean just he floats up into the wall and just as the car comes down, it's the tiniest touch on Brian Crowles. And I tell you what, I thought he was going to save it there, but nah, as soon as it went 90 degrees, all you can do is just slam on and hope for the best. Exactly, it's a bit like, and I've got to be honest and say, that was six of one, half a dozen of the other, to be honest, looking at that, is that uh, you know, Brian just sort of like washed out a little bit, nothing major, as the other car was just coming down ever so slightly, and it was just the perfect storm, I think. Yeah, well, luckily that we got away with it, um, so there wasn't, 50 odd cars involved as you often get in these sorts of accidents but um why connor mills connor coming in then yeah i'm not sure why it might have been let's just see if the car goes up for tires or not obviously we can't see the pit crews when we're spectating however in the car you do get animated pit crews that's a stop and go he's been speeding the pits i'm sure connor has you reckon yeah uh, definitely okay. and uh, unfortunately that puts him down 18th place now the reigning champion as well don't forget everybody Connor Mills, your reigning virtual, uh, Vertex Stock Car Cup champion, is not immune to speeding in the pit lane. None of these guys are, and it happens to the best of us, and especially when you're talking about one mile an hour and you get nicked, it's easy to do, isn't it? I'm not commenting. I'm live on air. I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, considering your these honor. things have nearly, what, 700 brake horsepower, they are incredibly powerful cars, and 1% throttle could chuck you up a couple of mile an hour the uh, the control to keep it at a set speed is just absolutely and that's a killer mad. isn't it that is a real real shame for him because he'd, he'd come up uh, quite well he's, he's sort of been involved in uh, various bits and, uh, and pieces but uh, you know it, it uh, that's just sent him right back to 18th place now we've seen a number of the others fight through now just ahead of him is Brian Krause, who we also expect to fight through. He's caused this, uh, or has been involved in the incident that uh, caused this uh, yellow flag. So there's uh, there's some interesting heavy hitters out of position to come through. Now, I'm not going to say that's a bad thing because we enjoy watching that sort of like unravel in front of us, to be honest with you, don't we? It provides great entertainment to talk about. It certainly does. We've also had an issue for Jeff Hooper during the yellow flag. Not quite sure if things just checked up because uh, on on our timing software. Oh, okay. 
on the timing software it does flash up that someone has in inverted commas crashed when they go under a certain speed so if he slows down enough then it might have thought that he's had a crash but clearly not maybe it might be that there if he just drops under but oh well we're about to go back to glean, glean frag green flag racing Chaz crikey we've got those as well have we <laughs> <laughs> oh well we've got a good mix of nationalities in the top four as well we've got Alex Cedric of course from the United of most kingdoms Aaron Smith in the <laughs> United of most states and we've got Guillaume Hesno in France with the wonderful trick law and then Marcel Frenzena from Switzerland so it's good to see different nationalities in these leagues. I mean, we've had uh, a couple of different championships before that I've commentated on as well. I think we had, um, there was a league where we had, I think, 30 entries, and I think we had 22 nationalities in that league. And that's the beauty of sim racing and iRacing. And I mean, in real motorsport as well, you see it, don't forget. But in these things, it's so easy to bring so many nationalities and countries together for these events. People from all over the place, all walks of life as well. And you can be all doing the same thing at the same time in a great community atmosphere, and that's the beauty of it, isn't it? Yes, Mr. UN. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll be at the Peace Summit next week, everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I was, uh, I, whilst you were sort of uh, bringing a tear to everybody's eye there, I was uh, enjoying as well watching <laughs> that they are actually uh, uh, making a concerted effort to, uh, to get some heat in those tyres. So I think that... Uh, they may be expecting that fairly soon they're going to be uh, unleashed and they need to make sure they'll have the readouts, as far as I'm aware, that will even let them know what the uh, the temperatures of their tyres are. Yeah, I think... Or I've, certainly I've, if they're too cold, at least. <laughs> well, yeah, and you don't want that. You definitely don't want that. So Alex is about to put his foot down then, gets the field underway again onto lap 54 of the Kansas 150 in the Vertex Stock Car Cup. And Aaron Smith goes with him again, just behind here. Billy Fletcher and Alistair Topley are close together, just behind Jason Glenn as well. We have Justin Bailey with Ben Creener all over the back of him. Ben looking to push forward again. Not into the wall, hopefully, for Ben. But we're green flag this time around. Jack Mace is having a bit of a, uh, a brain fart when it comes to the internet behind him there. It's a bit all over the place, but keeps it together. And we've got Jonathan Hill, Justin Nyer, Connor Mills. Don't forget, we're going to watch Connor try and come through here. He's got 77 and Justin Nyer on his outside, so... If you're, uh, if you're on a slot machine right now, that's kind of what you want to see, isn't it? If uh, anyone's got PTSD from a time in Vegas, they're not going to want to see Connor Mills and Justin Nyer together on track. But it's still close at the front, though, here, Chris, because Aaron Smith is tucked up right behind Alex, and they've got nearly a second already on Guillaume Hesno behind. Yeah, I'm surprised by that because I was thinking what a fantastic start that uh, Guillaume has now got in that third position. You know, we've seen that Cedric and Smith are just incredible off of the starts. Uh, and, and Cedric has to be consistent with this because Aaron Smith really is the master of the starts and, uh, and sticks with Cedric. You can't, you've got to say that so Cedric because he's not given him that sneaky snifter to, to make a move. But Guillaume got a cracking restart, but somewhere in that opening tour, it's not gone well for him. He's, he's seen a bit of damage on the back there, but a little bit of a wiggle with the rear end as he came off the bank in there. It's not causing him too much of an issue for the triple one car of... Uh, uh, he says, looking down at his paperwork, Brian Zenner. <laughs> uh, I've got to keep looking until it becomes second nature. Uh, but you can see that he is actually closing in on the back of Hesno now, but just sort of like almost stalking like a, 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 a lion cub learning how to uh, pounce for the first time. You can see that he's getting ready to try and get himself up into a podium paying position. Lots of please there. Indeed. Nice alliteration. I love it. Um, Aaron Smith <laughs> has just done a purple sector one on uh, this lap as well. And I'm just looking at the top speeds here on the timing software that I've got. Everyone's doing roughly 190, 191 mile an hour. Cedric managed 194 last time round. And interestingly enough, because of his internet blipping him around a bit, Jack Mace apparently did 213 miles an hour. So uh, how much of that's true or not, I'm not sure. But um, I'm sure if he does get that speed out of the car, I'll be happy. But it looks like Aaron Smith is sick of following Alex's Vertex Esports car now, and he wants to put the pressure on. He is. That looked a bit more menacing all of a sudden there, didn't it? That he was certainly showing his nose. I mean, I called it earlier that I had a feeling that he was trying to pressurise Alex into a mistake. Now is probably the time that, that nobody, surely nobody is, uh, is, is, is immune from that because they're going to be getting tired from all of this. And because uh, we didn't have any pits during the course of that last safety car period. So you kind of think, well, 
is it worth just pushing him to see if he's going to make just that tiny little mistake? And we've seen it from some of these other cars. It doesn't need much of a mistake for it to have a big old impact. Yeah, definitely. You, you just put it down the inside of someone and they focus on that rather than where they turn in or how they sort of apply the throttle or the brake or how they come off the throttle. Any little input difference that you can make on someone and pile the pressure on can really mess with someone's race. We've got a great scrap here behind Billy Fletcher. That's Jason Glenn, Ben Creener and Justin Bailey for the last few spots in the top 10. Jack Mace just in the background of his shot in 11th place. I'm conscious that Connor Mills and Brian Crowell are coming through. Connor's up to 12th, Brian's up to 14th. So those guys Not as quick as I was expecting, though, is it, for those two? They're, they're, they, it goes to show that whilst we're saying, look, they're not out of it, they can still come back through, but they're not getting it their own way. That's how good the, uh, the, the breadth of competition throughout this field is. It's absolutely incredible. And, in fact, I think that, uh, uh, you know, third and fourth is probably the biggest fight we've got on the field at the moment because Hesno was under huge pressure, uh, and he is still, isn't he? It's like Noah's Ark two by two at the front as it stands at the minute, and it is just monumental between these guys. And they're going to start. What are we at? I can't quite make out. Is that 61 laps in? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 61. So the, moment. the tires are possibly getting close to. We may see a bit of movement on these cars when they start running high again into these corners, and and they're going to suddenly start trying to turn right when the corner goes to the left. <laughs> to coin uh, Lightning McQueen's phrase, there, I believe. From, uh, from the Disney Pixar <laughs> movie Cars. Um, oh, we've got a bit of a change around further down. I think Jamie, oh no, Jamie Jenkins just had a bit of a, a moment further down and dropped a spot. Jeff Hooper's got ahead. Uh, we just looked at James Harvey a moment ago. He's unfortunately dropped seven places in this race so far for Student Motorsport. They're always active in the YouTube chat, but um, he's not having it his own way at the minute. But someone that is, is Jason Glenn. He's up seven positions. So too is Adrian Burks in fifth. But Jason and Ben Creener have just swapped places now, and Ben is going to try and go forward and chase down his teammate, the Luxim 24 Esports, Billy Fletcher. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be enjoying this a lot more because he had a real, uh, to coin your camp in another race, rough and tumble uh, of a race <laughs> on Friday on the half-mile dirt track, didn't he? And, uh, and he's, he's, he's having a much better one here, so I think he prefers tarmac to dirt. And I've just been given info, speaking of uh, preferring tarmac to dirt, or dirt to tarmac, I say, Aaron Smith as he's in second place. Um, I've just been given info from FRA Scar on YouTube saying Aaron Smith is an amateur race driver in dirt track racing. So that is why he did so well last week. And I tell you what, that just nails home what we said before about the fact that this stuff can really, really translate very well from whichever way it goes, whether it's real racing means you're good on a sim, whether you're good on a sim means you're good at real racing. Aaron Smith has shown that he's got both qualities there. So is the guy in front of him as well, Alex Sedgwick. And to have these two fighting when they both specialise in different disciplines as well that aren't actually this one because Alex, you know, he loves his road course racing in NASCARs, he loves his oval racing but it's not what he does full time and Aaron Smith does it on dirt so this is a bit of a mix of both for them and look at what it's producing, it's great, great racing. Isn't it just I mean we saw there that uh, not only was uh, Aaron Smith in that uh, yellow and black number 70 car sat there in second at the moment, not only is he incredibly quick into that corner um, but he, he nearly sort of, I don't know, he was caught between two minds of whether to make a move. It's not clean cut, that's the problem, of whether he can actually stuff it up inside, outside, whatever, because Alex is just on rails as it stands at the moment, but he's definitely got some incredible speed there in that second place, and he nearly washed out and caught the rear corner of Alex's car. Now, I say on rails, Alex wasn't that time on the exit no. of the corner <laughs> as he came off, that suddenly got a little bit of a wiggle on. He shook his uh, his tail feathers at uh, Aaron Smith behind him. Uh, but the problem is, is that I think Aaron Smith saw that happening and probably ever so slightly lifted himself. Yeah, he, he wouldn't want to force the issue and compromise himself too much, I don't think. That's what you've got to think of. Whenever you go for a move, you've got to have a backup plan just in case it does go wrong. And if you're worrying about what's behind you, then it's not easy. Billy Fletcher and Alistair Topley just... Uh, a bit of a swap around as well. Billy gets out of it. Alistair just gives him a bit of a tap. Look at the back end of Billy's car hanging out there. But here comes Ben Creener. He's going to try and go around the outside now. Opportunistic as ever. He says, no, Alistair, you are not having this high line, mate. This is all mine now. Thank you. And he's going to carry Creener the speed around the outside. <laughs> and I tell you what, he's already got it. Don't look at that. Great stuff yeah, from Ben Creener. There's just no messing. And that's what we see time and time again from Ben, is that he doesn't sort of just loiter with intent. He's like, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. And he just... <laughs> 
pounces so quickly. And, you know, there's times that you kind of go, do you know what? Just be decisive. Just get it done. Just throw it in there. But he does it without being, you know, Banzai running the risk of, uh, you know, because we'd hear all about it if he was a bit too much. On Friday, I don't think he particularly liked the, uh, the dirt track because he could throw his decisive moves. And the nature of being sideways on the dirt meant that he would suddenly sort of pirouette round in the way that he wasn't wanting to. Here, in his own element, he is able to do it and he just absolutely pounced. And I almost felt sorry for those two as we suddenly saw that black car looming in the background. Oh, he's pounced on the wall, though. I'll tell Ooh, you that. Okay. There's the, uh, there's the comment that <laughs> goes instantly. But um, he's taken a bit of the paint off the right-hand side of it. And now he's got the work to do again. Just a righty shot there is Jason... Uh, sorry. I've got one of the names right. I was going to say Jason Bailey or Justin Glenn, but it's Jason Glenn and Justin Bailey. And these two are still going at it for ninth and tenth position, but right behind them, peekaboo, it's Connor Mills in the chrome machine. And, well, look at the speed he's carried up there, even though Justin has managed to shorten that line on the bottom. Look at the amount of time he's lost from it. Connor's just gone, thank you indeed, into the top ten. More points on the board for Connor at the moment with 30 laps to go. And we've had about a 20, almost a 20 lap run now, Chris, with uh, with just green flags. So with the abrasive surface at Kansas, these cars are going to really start shredding tyres, just as Student Motorsport have said about James Harvey, who is also struggling on these tyres. Uh, is that what they said, is he is struggling? Uh, that's interesting. I did say that we were starting to get to that point where they kind of need that yellow flag or they're going to suddenly start pitting on the green, which is going to get really interesting. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, Brian Crowell's there. Is he trying to make up a place or has he lost the place there? I think he very he very quickly went past Jonathan Hill. He, uh, he just went low. Jonathan kept it up high. And Brian just gets a great run off there. The car's a little bit sideways, but just look at the momentum. Jonathan gives him plenty of room, keeps it up high, and just says, on your way, mate. I know that you're, uh, you're going to be quicker than me. So nice courteous stuff, you know. It's... That's interesting, though, isn't it? Because we saw a second ago, I forget who it was that we were watching, that suddenly, um, uh, by, by holding that outside line, was able to, uh, to sort of get past the car that went defensive on the inside line. That time, it was the other way around. If you can get the, uh, I think it's the whole, you know, slingshot move down the inside, then it can work. So I don't think you want to go defensive on the inside line, but you could potentially slingshot to it. So yeah, still, it but still, the outside is quicker. Yeah, definitely. Well, it was Connor Mills that did that, and then this time he's showing us that the inside is quicker at this point because he's going to go down the inside of Jason Glenn. We saw him go around the outside of Justin Bailey the lap before, but look at the speed that he's able to carry through there. Wow. Obviously, the thing that we've got to think of here, though, is he did have a stop go, but he didn't take tyres, and whether that's no. just helped him cool them down a little bit maybe on pit road just for that little bit of time, he's got some right pace Good. with it. Good point, good point. Some good pace, so what's, though. What's he up to now? I can't see that now on the screen. Uh, ninth place, isn't he? So, and Ben Green is his next target. I mean, it's still amazing. This we've got hot, hot, you know, heavy hitters that are having to fight from uh, a little bit further down. And is that uh, Krause coming up through behind them as well? Yeah, he's uh, he's trying to make moves here on Jason Glenn. He's just picking off the ones that Connor Mills has gone. So he's uh, picking up the scraps at the minute. We've got Jonathan Hill just closing in there as well. He's very sideways part way around the corner. And that's not usually where you see these cars break away. Um, speaking of breaking away, Cedric now has a three quarter of a second gap over Aaron yellow. Smith. Oh, the yellow's out. We have a we yellow. Don't anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure who caused that. I think Jamie Jenkins had a bit of a moment. Let me just have a quick look a bit further down. See what happens. Just ahead of yeah, Jamie Jakins suddenly popped down the order. He, oh, I thought he was going to make contact there. Apparently not. Oh wow, what's happened there? Oh, that's a wheel Ooh, failure. That is that is a, a wheel, that's a hardware failure for Jamie Jakins. Oh, luckily he bops in and out just as George Tolsma goes through. What's happened there is, yeah, the wheel or something. His hardware has reset itself there. It went completely fully left. And his throttle and his brakes were completely 100% on there. We'll uh, we'll watch that again, just so you can see what it's like on board. So we'll go for Jamie Jenkins. Listen for it. Ready? So all three pedals have gone flat out there. So he's had full clutch in, full brake, and full throttle. And then suddenly, and then it gets going again. Very, very bizarre incident, but he's lucky that he gets to keep going, to be honest, and it's nice to see that. And these guys, well, 
Look at them diving in. They're all going to be very happy. That's exactly what they needed, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, Aaron Smith's overshot his box. Smith has missed his pit box, and he's going to lose out big time there. Brian Crowell slides it in like he's parallel parking the thing at speed. Great entrance, <laughs> but we're going to see Aaron Smith leave the pit lane a little bit later than these boys hit. And he's going to rue that. He's going to miss out. Frein Zanuck who's second. Oh, Adrian Burks. And luckily, Guillaume Hesner goes through Adrian Burks there. And Smith now down to sixth Literally. place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beauty of sim racing as well. You know, packed pit lanes, no incidents like that. And uh, I think sometimes, yeah, people say, oh, it breaks the immersion. It's not realistic. Sometimes it's just for the best, though, isn't it? Little, uh, little features like that just to keep it from ruining anyone's day. In, in that sense yeah absolutely I, I can't uh, that, I didn't realise that until I saw that one obviously I'm, you're still sort of teaching me the ropes for uh, for all of this as it stands at the minute and uh, uh, yeah that I was like held my breath for a second there and then uh, enjoyed the uh, the merger of the, the two together there and it, yeah, as you say it just means that they can come out and presumably they work out that one was ahead of the other soon enough and thankfully all still able to run which is nice but now Brian Zayner up to second place. And Adrian Burks has been playing these pit stops to perfection. Nice bit of alliteration there for you, Chris, just to match your uh, P's from before. Not quite in the same fashion, but uh, I'll give you that. Um, Adrian Burks, though, fourth place at the moment for Blitz Motorsport. Started 12th, and he's in the shot of a podium here with less than 25 to go. Having a look here, Ben Creener and Connor Mills are swapping places. They're uh, having a bit of a change around further down the order. There's a, almost three wide behind them there, just behind Alistair Topley. Sorry, it's Justin Bailey at the front of that lot. Then it's Brian Crowles and Alistair Topley. But Cedric still leads the way here. Now, he's going to have a different opponent here, Chris, in Marcel Freinsainer. So whether he manages to match him on the restarts or not is going to be a completely different story because... Freintain has obviously not been here at this point. So how do you think he's got to approach this? Wow, that is uh, that is intriguing. I cannot believe how many places Aaron Smith, he's going to be cussing himself there, isn't he? And I realised I was asking you a question there and my mic was uh, muted. I hadn't realised I'd uh, uh, inadvertently switched it off. As I was going to say is that with those changes of positions, are they told that they need to get into a certain position uh, by race control? Uh, in eye racing, it basically comes up with a window um, a small window just saying, look, we're going to go too wide, we're going to stay single file, and it, it tells people what car to let past or who you should be in front of and behind. Awesome. So these guys get it directly from the sim as well, so uh, it can't be sort of blamed on one individual. Um, also means that uh, the Mike, Michael Yao, our uh, race controller as well with uh, Rob Pearson, means that those boys don't get in trouble either. But I'm, uh, I'm sure that they'll be, uh, they'll be loving it. Um, I'm pretty sure now, though, I was just about to say, let's bring Alex Sedgwick in for a chat, but he's got one to green, to so we'll uh, yeah. we'll leave it with him. Um, maybe we'll, <laughs> yes. probably, we'll probably end up speaking to him afterwards, but he was saying last time, you know, his heart goes through the roof in these things. He's, he's always nervous for sim racing more than real racing because you can't feel as much and you have to focus a bit more, so just opens your eyes to it all. But I'm looking forward to this restart because Adrian Burks, Guillaume Hesno and Marcel Freinzainer have all been so so on it this whole race and now they get a chance without Aaron Smith between them to really go at Alex Cedric now we've got Tom Selden in and out of the pits a lot look how close these guys are tucked up <laughs> ready to they go mean business. oh Alex has really caught Marcel out there and he's going to have the overlap I think that Adrian Burks is managing to hold on around the outside we've got Aaron Smith trying to make places too he's got Billy Fletcher to his inside and Adrian Burks is going to have to try and hang on round Franzena and I think he's managed to do it. Brian Crowell's coming past Alistair Topley here and Adrian Burks is actually up into second place now. I think Franzena got slightly out of shape and there is the Chaz curse. You look away and he's lost a place. Hesno has lost out to Aaron Smith who's also done a mega job off that restart. We've got a great scrap in the middle as well. Ben Crean, Connor Mills and Brian Crowell's just behind there in the background. James Harvey kisses the wall. I'm sorry, I can't look away from Aaron Smith because he's putting the pressure on Hesno, two of the quickest guys in the field tonight. He's all over the shop going into one and two, but he knows now the pressure is on. He's on fresh rubber. Now is his time to push, isn't it? But the big problem, I mean, he knows that he needs to get up high as quick as he can, which is what he's done exactly there, is that it, it was, it's one thing to try and have the move, but if you get locked down there, 
it's not going to be long before it's not the quickest. And look at that down low there. Ben Creener, number 38, the black car, was trying to have a little go up the inside. But he's got the oh, 88 no. car, Fletcher, Billy Fletcher. And there's the contact, Billy Fletcher. But I think Connor Mills possibly started that one, didn't he? And, oh, round goes Creener. He's going to be livid with that one. I think, you know, I think they both just kissed the wall at the same point. Uh, Connor really? Mills completely went around. I think they both ran out wide. Just have a quick look here. We'll go on the, uh, the chopper camp. Yeah, it was Connor and Billy both oh, just hit the wall of, the, of their own accord. And then Ben was Apologies, in and out. Connor, I, I misread that one completely. That was just avoidance by the looks of it for Connor, wasn't it? I think, I think genuinely they both just hit the wall at the exact same point. They just bounced off it really hard. I'll, uh, we'll go on board with Connor. Yeah, he was behind both of those two, wasn't he? And, yeah, so uh, and I think he just avoided them. Oh, yeah. Well, no, he did. Yeah, sorry, you're right. Out the last corner, wow. and it was like synchronised swimming there, but synchronised crashing, unfortunately. He does a bit of grass tracking along the way as well, comes back up onto the circuit. But it's a real shame because Ben Carina, the only one of the three that didn't hit the wall in the first place, is the one that misses out there. Oh, he's going to have scared someone was, there for the pinhead. And he was coming through the field brilliantly. I was getting all uh, excited. And that's not looking healthy, is it? Wow. I know that they like to turn left, but that's uh, that's taking it to another extreme, that, unfortunately, for Ben Carina. It looks, it looks more like he's bowing to the crowd the way he's uh, pointing outwards there, isn't it? <laughs> in, in aviation terms, we call that a knife-edge pass. But, wow, yeah, that with... is not healthy, is it, at all? Crabbing no. all the way down the pit lane. And he with... was doing a cracking job coming back through the field there. We saw that he was going to uh, make the lunge. Now, what are we at? 82 of the 100... I, was, well, I wonder whether we're going to get anybody sort of go and uh, and sort of take some new... I mean, they probably don't need to, do they? But, you know, there's there's not many laps left to go. Yeah, that's very true. They have to really think about what they do now. We're going to just have a look at Adrian Burks, by the way, on the restart. Got a cracking job here of getting past Marcel for Einsteiner. But I think Marcel got slightly out of shape on the exit here. Let's have a little look. I know they got close together. Oh, no, he just really, really didn't get a good run. He just lost so much momentum out of nowhere, just trying to hug the inside line. So uh, so Adrian didn't sort of come down and tap him. You know, it was courteous to make sure there wasn't contact, but he really did lose a lot from that one. So uh, the, the big interest for me there was watching uh, the, the difference between the high and the low line there is that Aaron Smith, of course, he dived up the inside trying to make a pass. Once it didn't work, he just could not get back out wide uh, early enough. And he was left on that slower line and he, he was just hung out to dry and it just did not work. And it just goes to show the fine balance in that, that they've got to, to, to sort of tread here to, to try and do something. It, it, just, it just baffles me. It, it, for anybody that hasn't necessarily watched this before, you know, around these ovals and they think it is, oh, you just turn left. You're seeing it right there, the difference between the high line and the low line. You're going to suddenly go diving up the inside if you're trying to do the catapult from the car that you were slipstreaming. That can work. We've seen the speed you can carry through. If you go defensive on the low line, you're probably a sitting duck because then that means they get to go and take the, the, the high line and greater speed. But when you're in a pack like this is that we saw Aaron Smith make an obvious move that he's going to try and slipstream up, you know, catapult up the inside wasn't working and he's then could not get himself back out again because of the pack of car, cars all around him it, it's just incredible it's like the fastest guy, game of chess yeah it really is there's so many mind games involved and you've got to think about what you're doing and how it affects your competitors and how what your competitors are doing affects you you've just got to really be on it and completely be switched on throughout the whole thing we've still got the lights on the safety car by the way so we've got one more lap at least and Alex Cedric he's led the race from the very start He's led it through all the pit stops as well. And I'm not sure if you knew this before tonight, but um, Alex has actually got a 100% win streak in the Vertex Stock Car Cup on ovals at the moment. So it doesn't look like that's going to get beaten. But Adrian Burks, who was gained 10 places from where he started, is probably the key guy to try and do that at the moment. Mm, and they're lining up ready for the restart, I see. And, uh, you know, Burks now is in, in a sort of very interesting and new position for him. For the first time this race, he's lining up alongside Alex. But equally, you've got to say that means Alex doesn't quite know what to expect from Burks because he's been having uh, Aaron Smith with him all the time. He's got to get used to someone else's style now. Yeah, you've got to really have your wits about you to keep an eye on who's going to be chasing you off these restarts because some of these guys are used to it more than others. Some of them have different approaches as well. That's the thing. Not everybody does these restarts the same way. Some of them are really reserved in it, try and get a run late. 
Others will pressurise you into going earlier and really stick with you. And, uh, and having that as the leader as well is a massive amount of pressure. So however Sedgwick reacts here, I'm sure we're going to see a good one. Lights on the safety car are out. So we're going to start lap 85 with 15 to go. There is a potential that we could run to green here. We've got uh, FRA Scar on the YouTube chat saying it's not the last caution for sure. Whether <laughs> that comes true, we will see. So it's down to Alex again. Puts his foot down, catches Adrian Burke's napping, and Guillaume Hesno's going to go with him. That's a very, very good start. But look at this around the outside here, Chris. Connor Mills yeah. back up to fourth. I know, it's incredible, isn't it? He's done it. He's taken the speed around the outside. Look at that. Aaron's now decided he's not going to be hung out to dry. But it hasn't worked, interestingly. Connor Mills suddenly stalled up at the, in, in the faster line there. And that was intriguing to see. I'm not sure quite why he stalled there. Uh, and he's dropped down. And through goes Aaron Smith, past Connor Mills. Now he's trying to get past Marcel as well in the triple one car. Uh, big bit of uh, bodywork hanging off, I think I saw there from the uh, triple one car. But look at Aaron Smith. He's now trying a bit of everything. He's gone down below the apron there, below the white line, seeing if he can carry that speed through. But uh, again, now he's stalling as it stands at the moment on that sort of lower, slower line. Yeah, I think uh, Connor went in very, very hot into turn one. And I just think he had to adjust his line and brake a little bit part way around, maybe a slight bit of trail braking. He kept it tucked in nicely, but it just really, really didn't help his pace off the corner. So he's uh, he's done himself over a little bit there. Guillaume Hesno made a good start, though. He's up to second place now in red face racing. And he is also trying everything to get after Alex Cedric. But it is this battle for second, third, fourth and fifth. Berks <laughs> is going to be watching his mirror a little bit down the straights here, thinking, what are you boys doing? Is that one car or three behind me? Because they're so <laughs> close together. You've got Frein Zayner, then Connor Mills and Aaron Smith. We'll go on board with Aaron for just a moment. We'll put the dashboard in the bottom left so you can see the ultimate speeds that these things are doing. They are flying nearly 180 mile an hour down that back straight. And look at that, just has to get out of it so much to hug that wall. But he's going to get a really good run on the exit and try and use the slipstream right down to the bottom. And look at the speed that he's carrying. It's just not going to be enough though. It, it just looks like it should be. But by the time they all get to top end speed at the end of the straight, or not quite straight, they just all match up again, don't they? Yeah, I mean, it looked almost, uh, and bearing in mind, I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm not a driver, uh, I talk about it, but it looked to me like he almost went too early then, didn't it, to drop down? He, you know, he had a bit more of, uh, of the slipstream effect. Now, he's gone to that high line. Connor Mills has been forced down low. I don't know whether he was trying to have a go on the triple one, and uh, that hasn't worked for him, so he's lost out Connor Mills. It, it can just see that the, the lines are so important on here, aren't they? Yeah, they really are. There's a little bit of a lock up there in front from somebody, a bit of tyre smoke or something. Not quite sure on that. We're just looking at Jonathan Hill here, by the way. He's gained eight positions now in this race. He's uh, He was a bit stable in his position earlier, a bit static, and now he's really started to crack on. He's got three Revolution satellite racing cars in a row, actually. We've got Aaron Smith, Connor Mills, and then Jonathan Hill. They're all teammates. Their other teammate, Sean Stacey, in the 92 car, is 17th down here at the moment with Jeff Hooper just three quarters of a second ahead. We're having a bit of an up and down race for Tom Selden, unfortunately, who is in and out of the pits. But still at the front, it's Alex Sedgwick, the only driver not to gain or lose a position in this race. And Hesno is dropped off a little bit now. The gap is just over half a second. And he needs to keep an eye on whether Adrian Burks can close in on him from behind here, doesn't he? Yeah, and it looks like at the moment he has with, uh, with 10 to go is that it's now more about second backwards, isn't it? Sedgwick's uh, uh, sort of checked out and, and put a bit of daylight between himself, relatively speaking. But look at that. It looked like Aaron Smith is making a move. He has. He's dived up to the inside of uh, Marcel, the triple one cars, losing out as it stands at the moment. But we know it's not necessarily signed, sealed and delivered yet. He now needs to get himself up to the high line, close that door as quickly as he can. Has he not, he's not done it necessarily just yet, and he's taking Connor Mills with him. The good news for him is that now those two are going to punch through the air together, which suddenly actually leaves the triple one car high and dry, and uh, he's got to try and keep the space. And it's worked somehow again. That high line is working. As these tyres are going off, is that he's pulled that out. That was just do -si do your partner. It's just amazing, isn't it? Just how quickly you can turn it around. You just need to make one little correction as you go part way around the corner get a good run off it and you're guaranteed and you know you're absolutely laughing all the way to the bank you've also got Alistair Topley here putting pressure on Jonathan Hill for seventh position in the 41 he's gained only one place so far while Jonathan's gained eight we've got a yellow flag though boys someone is around George Tolsmer in the pink 25 what's happened here Jack Mace oh Jack. Again. yeah Jack Mace and Justin Nyer I'm not sure whether George just slowed down a bit more than they were expecting there that's uh 
No, I think Jack went in a little bit hot. Justin didn't expect it either. And then when they both slowed down, it was a nice 360. Although, oh, George just couldn't quite hold it after that 360. Manages to spin it around again. But we have another yellow flag, everybody. And only seven laps of this race to go. So we may end up with a green-white checker at this point. But just adds more excitement to the racing, doesn't it, Chris? It does. We had it in the real world over stateside, didn't we, the other day where uh, we had the... Uh, green white checker that made it very very exciting finish now are we going to get any of them you know what are the state of their tires is the slowdown going to help them or hinder them are they uh, cream crackered and they need to change them and it's it's worth it yeah, I, I don't know it, it, it doesn't look like it's it's going to be worth it although there yeah, from fifth backwards they've gone into aaron smith has, has rolled the dice connor mills has gone into the pits Mm. Now, this is a split. This is intriguing. I did wonder. I said that I was sort of almost alluding to the fact that it was a, a difficult call which way to go it. I was not expecting this split. Now, this could also mean that, that Hed Cedric and Hesno go, well, if they've gone in, I'll go in the next lap then. But, of course, they're on the slow lap as it stands at the minute. These guys will come out so they could find themselves catch up to the back of the train and then just suddenly whip past them. So, I don't know. Is this going to work? For Sedgwick, is he got enough life in the rubber to get him to the end? It's possible because there's not many laps left by the time we go green. I, I, I'm glad yeah. I'm, we're talking about it rather than doing <laughs> it. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I wouldn't be too confident in, uh, in going in at this point if it was me. Uh, Connor Mills there just behind Justin Nia now. Connor didn't have a very out. good stop, yeah. yeah. He no. needs to get a new pit crew, I think, you know. Mm. So we've seen that a few times for in, in here where it's just not gone quite to plan for Connor when he's come in the pits, you know. Maybe half of them are still self-isolating and can't work from home very well, so <laughs> you never know really, do you? <laughs> or like me, drinking gin and tonic on the job, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Well, I've spent a lot of this broadcast looking through a cider bottle because I've got my desk in a... I'm in a brand new office tonight, everybody. I'm in a new room in the house, so if it is echoey, I do apologise. I've not got any sound deadening in there yet. You're fine. But... Um, there's no ventilation in here, I figured out. So it's about 49,000 degrees in here at the moment. Um, if it helps, it doesn't make any difference because I'm next to an open window and still baking up. So because there's not a enough, breath then. of wind out there. <laughs> well, there's there's no uh, no ventilation in here right now. I've not got windows open. I've not got a fan. Nothing. It is baking up. Um, the room's been in the sun all day as well. And because my monitors are the other way round here, getting used to having the timing screen on the other side and the broadcast still in the middle-ish. Is, uh, is a bit different. So there has been a, uh, a cider bottle in the line of sight most of the evening. I can't tell you whether it's empty or not because I might lose my job. Um, Alex Sedgwick, though, I'll tell you what, he's not going to lose his job, is he? Well, he might be the one getting rid of me, but <laughs> so I'll tell you what, he's not going to lose his job from doing this in the minute because he's driven a very well-controlled race and it's been very <laughs> exciting to watch as always. But Hesno, he's just... I, Guillaume just hasn't quite got there with a win yet, but he's been so close on so many occasions. I think... This could be one of his real chances to break through, you know. Yeah, but, you know, I'm intrigued. We've got Cedric, Hesno, Burks uh, and uh, Marcel in the triple one car. And in fact, look at that. Krause has crept up into uh, fifth place there as well. They're all on the older rubber. They've not come in. What's the first stopper that, that uh, where, who's going to be the first one? Aaron Smith in 12th place. He's the first of the drivers that decided to stop. Now, we know he's a demon starter. He's on the fresh rubber. He's going to hope that he can really take advantage of that and make up probably a position or two early on on this restart. Um, it's, it's, I, I think you were kind of almost alluding to it, is that it, it just almost feels like there's too much to be done. Yeah, there's not enough laps to do it now. We're going to start lap 97 when we go green again. And tempers may flare between these guys because... Well, it's easy to do. It's uh, it's what Alex wants, you know. He, he always says to us, if you're going to interview people, make sure it's the people that have been involved in the crash and that it might be uh, might be all emotional because that's what the racing's all about. And he wants to drill home the fact that, as he said before, the cars aren't real, but the racing is, and the emotions are as well. So it's uh, it's it's interesting for people to see that as well because not everybody watching will be involved in sim racing. They're just motorsport fans as well. And it's great that esports can bring them the same sort of action. I mean, it's been a fantastic race tonight to start the season. Let's see which of these guys, or whether it's one of the guys behind, can start it out with a win as we're about to go green once again from the Kansas 150 in the Vertex Stock Car Cup. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm, getting, I'm getting really excited now. I'm wiggling in my chair a little bit. 
It's, uh, you could see Alex was sort of like trying to go early there, wouldn't he? Yeah, he's he's ready. He's got his foot ready on the throttle, even though about half an hour before the broadcast, he sent us a picture of his throttle and it was in three pieces because he had to fix yeah. it. But here we go then, probably for the last time, and Hesno goes with him. Hesno gets a really good launch, and he's going to beat him as well. He gets the side draft and takes the lead. Does Guillaume Hesno, wow. what a fantastic start. Marcel Freinzainer is going to come down the inside. Whether, I really hope I haven't jinxed Alex's throttle pedal and it didn't come on properly then, <laughs> let me tell you. Burks is still in fourth. Jason Glenn's getting 11 places to be in fifth position now. But this is amazing stuff from Guillaume Hesno, and now he's got Cedric really putting the pressure on. Maybe Alex thought, I don't want to be the car leading the way at the end of this. He maybe thought that I need to be the one putting the pressure on, not the one under pressure. And he's gone down the inside and got a really, really good run off it. He carries the pace. But don't forget, some of these guys, Aaron Smith, coming through at the top of your shot there, passing Billy Fletcher. He's on brand new tyres here, and he thinks, I've got a couple of laps to the end. Let's absolutely send it. Oh, there's a car on the wall behind him. That was Jonathan Hill. Oh, really? Yeah, Jonathan Hill just gave it a kiss. Billy Fletcher has got a very, very damaged car at the front. And he look at the difference of Aaron Smith's run there, though. The grip off the corner is unbelievable. And now he's going to try and get a draft off Brian Crowles. But, well... There's going to be, oh, we've got a yellow. We've got a yellow. There's a car oh, going down the order. It's Alistair Topley. Oh. Which means that that's going to lose it for Cedric. Surely is. Unless, oh, look at that as well. It wasn't even his incident. He, oh, that's a massive hit as well. Side on. Let's try and see who that was that was involved just in front. Oh, it was uh, Jeff Hooper. Loses the back end. Door checks him. And then, bang, the energy gets completely dissipated into the wall car flies around and then hits the other end as well and pff, horrible incident there for Alistair Topley and I think that's going to be game over but Hesno retains the lead after the yellow so phew, we're going to go to a green white checkered and whether Hesno can hold on to it we'll have to see but something very strange didn't quite work out there for Alex Cedric and what uh, what better time than to drag him in drag him in and have a chat Alex um restart didn't go your way there mate what happened Got a fan attack. Um, my shifter decided that thirds was actually neutral, so I had to go second to fourth, and then obviously I just lost all my momentum, which not ideal. Um, but I'm also quite quite worried about this one now because obviously if it does the same, it means that I'm a on the bottom and b have no acceleration. So uh, yeah. should be in um, I was surprised at how much I could kind of fight back on the inside though. So. It's not, it's not completely over just yet. Well, it's going to be an exciting finish, mate. I was literally just saying before it as well about your uh, your throttle pedal, how you sent us pictures of it before and it was in almost three pieces and then that happened and I thought, I've not jinxed his throttle there, have I? So <laughs> I've actually jinxed another piece of uh, your hardware without actually knowing it. But fingers crossed it doesn't yeah. cause an issue, though, at the very end. We live in hope. Um, no, it'd be nice to keep my 100% uh, record on an oval. I think I've only got two laps to make it happen now so uh we shall see but uh it should be fun anyway it should be interesting well good luck to you mate it's going to be exciting to watch from up here and i'm sure it'll be exciting from where you are i bet your heart rates through the roof just a little yeah <laughs> <laughs> enjoy it mate we'll speak to you later alex there second place at the moment but this man <laughs> just in front guillaume hesno is the one stopping him for red face racing do you reckon it's time for him to get that win it could be, you know. I mean, uh, uh, you know, I got a lot of time for him. He was, uh, he was sort of overstepping the mark a couple of times in the on the dirt track last week, and he had put his hand up and said, "I'm really sorry, is that uh, I'm conscious of, of what I probably did there, where he was going from the high line and suddenly coming down low." Uh, and we've not seen him put a foot wrong today. He's not done anything wrong that I've seen him do. He's just sort of been there, just waiting for that opportunity he's always been up there at the pointy end hasn't he and uh, again I'm hoping I'm not jinxing him on this one that uh, he's going to stay there and and I just you know he, he's going to just want to stay cool and just get a steady he doesn't even need to get an absolute screamer does he, he just needs to to just keep it even away from the start and then just trust on the uh, the racing line yeah he, he said that um, himself there that he was quite pleased with how much he could fight back from the bottom so I think we're going to see him really chuck it down there now. Obviously, he's going to be there from the restart, so he doesn't have much choice to begin with. But I was talking he... about Hesno there, just to be honest. Oh, he makes apologies. Sure he there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Guillaume's, um he's in the prime position with the restart. Whether he can catch Alex off guard is another thing. But, yeah, I think uh, he's going to have to watch that bottom line and just try and make the most of the top. But don't forget, these guys have not pitted in quite a while now. So some of the guys coming through, I mean, Brian Crowles is into sixth place. Aaron Smith is seventh. 
and he's really going to be one of the ones to watch because he's on fresher rubber. Not the freshest of rubber, but still, he's probably in better nick than the guys ahead of him, isn't it? Well, I'm just trying to make sure I'm uh, uh, interpreting the, the timing screen. It, does the PC column somehow mean the pit stops that they've made? Uh, that will be... Let's have a quick look. Because it's certainly showing four for Aaron Smith compared to three ahead of them. But yes. if that's the case, so's Jason Glenn. Oh, yes. Jason Glenn. Unless he did that early on. But he uh, appears to have done another one. And he sat there in uh, an interesting fifth place. So he could be could be the wild card here, you know. Mm, it, it certainly could be uh, a very interesting turn of events for him to go and grab the win. I mean, he's in a good place to do it. He's in fifth at the moment. So if we've got... Uh, a green and then a white and a checkered. It's going to be two laps of absolute chaos behind him, potentially. But, you know, if he gets his head down and cracks on with it, it's plenty of time to get the job done in front. It's going to be very, very exciting. But Hesno now is going to be the one under pressure. He has everything to do and just needs to keep this field behind him. But when the front of that field is the likes of Alex Sedgwick, I mean, Marcel Freinstein has been really, really good in this race in third. Yeah. And again, Jason Glenn coming up from the ranks with Adrian Burks as well. Two of the biggest movers in the field. I, I can't call this one in terms of who's going to win. I've got no idea. I have no. got no idea. So we're <laughs> the gonna... good news is we've got padlocks on our wallets because we're not betting, so we're fine. <laughs> oh, there's nothing in my wallet anyway, so it's a bit of a pointless padlock. But, um, one more lap then. You will see the safety car lights go off now, surely. Yep, there they go. So... We are going to have one more lap. And, whoa, <laughs> I'll tell Toppy you what. Tommy's gone into the pits again, I noticed, by the way. I've just seen him uh, dive into the pits again. Yeah. I think maybe he might have brought the car out and it's uh, it's not quite as intended. And I noticed, by the way, Ben Crean is out of the race as well. So he's uh, he's caught it a day. Too much damage there. We saw it crabbing down the pit lane. And uh, I'd imagine that uh, he just wasn't able to get that sorted, sadly. Yeah, real shame that for Ben as well, because he was doing well in making his positions up, but wrong place, wrong time, I'm afraid. George Tolsma still running as well as Tom Selden. He's had a bit of a baptism of fire in the unlucky 13 at the back of the field, but here we go then. Whoa. <laughs> Honestly, everybody... Let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Indeed. Everybody, strap yourselves in. Make sure your doors are locked and your windows are closed. Well, actually, close your window, uh, open your windows because it's absolutely roasting. Look at Alex there, dabbing the brakes. He's keeping it on the throttle and then just dabbing it on the brakes just to bring it back a little bit. He is waiting alongside Hesno and he's going to try and get one over on him just as Guillaume did on the last restart. So the safety car is in. Guillaume lights up the rear as he runs out wide. Is that going to harm his pace? He comes straight down and says, no, Alex, no, you are not getting through this time. Sacre bleu, Alex says, as he chases him down <laughs> into turn one. Chucks the car in then. We're green. Oh, Jeff Hooper has just disappeared down the inside. We're not going to go yellow for that, are we? Please? No. Guillaume has no still leading then. Down the back straight. Adrian Burks has got ahead of Frank Zayner behind them. Brian Krause is fifth. Aaron Smith is coming through. Aaron's up to fifth. Now Jason Glenn's had a bit of a nightmare start. He's down to yeah. seventh position. But if they cross the line now, that means that it is going to definitely be the last lap of the race. Here we go then, on to the white flag, lap 105 in the Kansas, 150 in a bit. And wow, Alex is really pushing Hesno there. He just unsettles the rear of the car a little bit. He's going to try and come down the inside. But look at the run off the corner, though. Hesno can't quite do it. Adrian Burks Ooh. is closing in here as well, isn't he? Yeah, that's why Alex had to just suddenly dive out there, didn't he? He had to just dive up because he could see that Burks was going to get the good run off the outside. And he did what not want to give him that opportunity. Definitely not, but out the final corner, everybody. It's Guillaume Hesno takes the Kansas 150 in the Vertex Stock Car Cup. He finally, finally gets his first win of the championship, and that is a brilliant result for him. He got the job done when it mattered. That one restart is what made it. Alex Sedgwick has led this entire race except for a final few laps, and they are the ones that mattered in the end. And Guillaume Hesno, Guillaume Hesno wins at Kansas. What an amazing race, Chris. That was fantastic, wasn't it? There's just so many people that have done incredibly well there. I mean, the podium position for Adrian Burks, that's a nine-place game from where he started. Absolutely incredible. Awesome, awesome result, and he can be very, very proud of that one. We'll bring the results up for you on screen then, everybody. There you go, Guillaume Hesno.
wins the race from Alex Cedric and Adrian Burks. Marcel Franzena is going to be disappointed not to be on the podium, but still happy with the fourth place after such a uh, chaotic race for him. Everyone around him had a mad race, but he kept it nice and clean. Aaron Smith made a very good recovery near the end with Brian Crowles in sixth. Jason Glenn, seventh, a good result for him with Billy Fletcher a bit under the radar in eighth position. Justin Bailey finished ninth. James Harvey for Student Motorsport got a very well-deserved tenth position. Connor Mills finishing 11th ahead of Jack Mace. Another good recovery, actually, bearing in mind he was in the first incident of the race as well. Jeff Hooper finishes 13th ahead of Justin Nia and Sean Stacey. Then it's Jamie Jenkins and Jonathan Hill, the last cars running. Then Alistair Topley with seven laps down. And behind them, it was Tom Selden, George Tolsma, and unfortunately, Ben Creener, 21st and last. And that is our race controller, Michael Yao, at the uh, bottom of the standings as well. But, well... Highlights in that one, Chris. That was uh, an absolute corker, wasn't it? And you, uh, you can't pick it out, really, can you? I mean, it was uh, it was just incredible. I think the most disappointed driver there is going to be Aaron Smith in fifth place, and that was really the pit stop that cost him. He was getting better and better again at the restarts, and now that he saw that Alex was vulnerable at the start, he's going to be devastated that he wasn't the one that was there to take advantage of it. But Guillaume Hesno was absolutely faultless through that for me in the fact that he was just there, not setting the world alight. He was just patiently keeping in that sort of top three, four, five positions uh, and, and therefore was able to take advantage at the right point and then kept his cool brilliantly at the end there to make sure that uh, he, he didn't, you know, lose out to Alex trying to come back at him. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm just going to turn the noise down here because despite that being on a blimp cam, that is ear-blowingly loud. Stop showing off, but I can't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for, um, the, the feed that I streamed to Chris, unfortunately, everybody, doesn't have audio, I'm afraid, for, uh, for Chris, so he can't hear the beautiful roar of these cars. But, wow, an amazing race for everybody there. I was very, very pleased to, uh, to call the shots on that one with you, Chris. We're going to drag some of the drivers in for an interview. And, well, who better to start with? Who better to start with? Oh, I tell you what, we need to just move up um, a channel. Bear with me one second, buddy. Just bear with me, everyone. We're just going to uh, move up here because we've got uh, permissions in the other channel that means that Guillaume can't speak to us, and we don't want that when we've got an interview, do we? Um, Guillaume Hesno joins us, race winner. Guillaume, you must be over the moon with that, mate, after coming so close to last uh, last season and getting a win there. Uh, last season uh, was really frustrating at Martinsville, but uh, this victory was uh, really intense, and uh, I, I still... Don't realize uh, uh, what happened on the on the final lap. It, it was a really with awesome and uh, thanks to uh, to Alex for for this clean battle. Yeah, it was great to watch. And uh, the restart when you overtook him, obviously we were saying just at the end there that Alex pretty much led the whole race. But those final few laps that you led were the most important ones. How did it feel when you got ahead of him and then got a yellow so you could sort of keep the position for a bit longer? Uh, can you repeat the question, please? Uh, I know my English is not uh, perfect. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. How did you feel when you uh, when you finally got ahead after the uh, the restart? Uh, uh, it was uh, unexpected uh, because uh, Alex is, is by far the, the best driver of the series in my opinion. But uh, but uh, when when I see I was in front of of him I. Uh, I, uh, I was just hoping to, to have no more cautions uh, and it happened. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was frustrated because uh, uh, I know uh, the, the restart will, would not be uh, easy. Uh, and I spun my tires on the last restart. Uh, it was very close to be a, a disaster for me. Mm. But uh, I uh, managed to... Uh, to keep uh, the car on track uh, and, uh, and it was fantastic. Well, you really have deserved it, mate. I was saying all the way through the broadcast that how close you came to getting a win last season and just missing out on the top three in the championship at the end as well. But it's great to see you finally get there. Um, Chris, any questions from you, mate? No, that, that summed it up, really. I mean, uh, a fantastic uh, restart to take the lead. Fantastic to stomach the pressure of, uh, of right at the end there well-deserved win that uh, you, you were always just keeping yourself in the hunt for the closing stages by the looks of it thank you very very much guys uh, I, it's 
it was very difficult to keep the the car on the uh, uh, near the wall, but you, you don't have to. Uh, you you should not touch uh, the wall, and it's um, it's um, um, so close uh, every time, uh, and uh, I uh, on the final uh, restart I was just hoping to. Don't touch the wall and uh, on uh, on blue my uh, my race. Yeah, well, it was it was good to see that you kept it all under control. I mean, there was a little bit a little spin of the tires, but you managed to still keep the speed over uh, over Alex. And at the end of the day, mate, you've got the win, and that's the bit that matters. Um, just before we let you go, buddy, is there anybody you would like to give a shout out to on stream? Yes, uh, I want to thank uh, to thank Praska for. Uh, for support me uh, during this season and uh, Joel Real timing and also my parents <laughs> again so uh, thanks uh, to uh, to all my supporters smashing very, very well done Guillaume and I will let you go and uh, enjoy the moment mate you've deserved it thank you what a deserving winner and what a cracking guy Guillaume Hesno is he's yeah, wasn't uh, it lovely 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 guy and it kind of makes it even sweeter doesn't it yeah for sure and like I said he came so close so many times last season and he was looking forward to getting at least a top three in the championship which he said himself he wasn't really expecting and it was plucked from his grasp by just a couple of points in the last round and it's good to see that he started his season off now with the best thing you can do and that's getting the first race win of the championship isn't it? it absolutely and I mean he, he, we've seen it time and time again is that they take confidence from performances like that, that that you then see it carried into the next race don't you and i i, I mm. get the impression from the way that he was reacting there that there's like you know a monkey off the back kind of feeling yeah definitely it's uh, it's a weight off the shoulders isn't it as uh, as as these guys know and love it's uh, it's the relief of finally getting that breakthrough uh, the next guy that we're going to bring in and have a quick chat with is uh, Jason Glenn in the number 55 track velocity racing car. Um, Jason, that was uh, quite a great recovery at the end there. I mean, nine places gained over the race. You were the biggest mover in the field tied with Adrian Burks. Um, how did you manage to get that far up near the end? Was it just consistent pace or did you just work the stops to your advantage? Um, good question. I don't really know. Um, <laughs> I, I kind of noticed that I didn't really have the ultimate pace as some of the other guys. So I, I just thought we'll just see what happens and then eventually as the race went on people just started coming towards me so I was just quite happy to truck along. I did get involved in something the very first lap which was not ideal but yeah it was good fun. Um, it was a bit scary at the end with uh, worn tyres but we'll, we'll take a good result like that. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, it's a great way to start your campaign this season with a lot of good points. Um, coming into tonight, was that what you were expecting or was it just try and finish, maybe get a top 10? I, I think I was hoping for a top 10 at absolute most because I really struggled with some of those guys with the times they were doing in practice and qualifying. I just couldn't get anywhere near it. So to get a top 10 on a track I was not very happy with, I'll, I'll take that and we'll, we'll go on to. I think we've got Indy next and the Roval, so that will spice things up a bit. Well, that's that's one of the beauties of this, uh, this series, isn't it? There's such a mix of different talents that you'll need and uh, a bag of tricks to take with you going from an oval to a road course and then alternating again and again um, yeah. what what circuit is it on the calendar you're looking forward to most this season ah uh, oh good question I think Zolder probably or yeah. maybe even um, Montreal because I think that's that's going to be an interesting one but Zolder we had quite a good result last season and I really enjoyed it so but that's usually putting the jinx on yourself when you say saying you enjoy a track because it never goes very well when you say that. Well, you're in a commentary box as well, so the commentator's uh, curse will have been bestowed upon you. Um, but I know what you mean, though, about Zolder. It was the race of the season last season. It was an incredible track. And, uh, you know, if you can do this well around an oval like this and you're looking forward to Zolder as much, I'm sure uh, there's no reason you can't do well there. Um, well, any, cr any, uh, any questions from you, Chris? I think you asked them all there. It was just great to see. And I, I actually... Uh, was bigging you up there, Jason, as I could almost sort of feel at the end there, but only because I misread. You'd done an extra pit stop, and I wondered whether you'd gone in for fresh rubber and that you were going to sort of dive up, but I got it wrong. That was obviously an earlier extra pit stop. Um, but I was just ready for you to go pouncing in that closing stage <laughs> for the, that final restart. Yeah, well, it's the, the practice race we did the other day, Alex, when myself and the whole load of us just didn't pit, so 
when he didn't pet, I thought, right, we'll just see what he does. And then everyone else behind us, and I think it was Aaron was one of the first guys who took new tyres. So it was just, you know, as Chaz likes the yellow tar, you could just see that coming up in the rear view mirror, which was a bit, uh, t you know, treacherous coming up. But I thought, right, okay, just let him go and we'll see what happens. But no, it was good fun. Well, how difficult a, a decision was it to decide whether to pit or not at the end there? An easy one, because as soon as the guys in front didn't pit, I thought, well, we'll make sure we'll just go with them and see what happens. That it's only two laps, so that you know, by the time everyone gets a start and gets going, everything might have just spread out enough that yeah, we not we thought get was, the benefit. Yeah, that's what we thought. There wasn't quite enough. That I can understand why they possibly rolled the dice, although probably not Aaron. I'm surprised he did, but. Um, you know, I was interested to see from a driver's perspective how tempting it was. But you were watching them at least to, to help make your decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Wow, love it. <laughs> well, very well done, Jason. It was awesome to watch, mate. Glad you got a good result out of it. Yeah, uh, is there anybody you'd you. like to give a shout out to, mate? Just yourselves for doing the, the broadcast and the commentary and Brian for all his help. Brian, Brian Crowles has kind of been helping me out with driving and stuff and Ivan is... Uh, crew chief so we are double doing the, the virtual of the bell car race this saturday in the touring cars the endurance race so that'll be an interesting thing there's a bit of a change from doing this but just thanks to them and just uh, yeah just alex as well for setting it up and just keep up the work, good work because it, it's good to watch and there's a lot of people enjoy watching it thank you very much mate well uh, i'm really glad that you enjoy it too and uh, we will speak to you once again very soon my friend okay catch you later cheers cheers and we'll bring one more in then. Um, someone that was making progress towards the end there and didn't quite make the break for eventually finishing 11th. Connor Mills joins us in the booth. Um, I'll leave you in the very capable hands of uh, Chris Dawes, Connor. <laughs> yeah, well, thanks for that, uh, uh, Chaz. <laughs> I mean, Connor, uh, I was, I'm sh I'd, I'd be interested to hear your take in a second, but we, we personally, from the commentary perspective, were loving that sort of like up at the pointy end, then back again, then fighting back through again. I mean, did you enjoy it or was it more uh, action than you wanted? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, there was no no game plan to making it that ridiculously hard for myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, it kind of, you know, the, the game plan going into it was uh, I knew I had the pace, but I wasn't confident on the sort of race pace. Um, so I just kind of wanted to just keep it there, keep it there, keep it there, which was going well at the start. I was third. They, the guys dropped dropped ahead quite a bit, but I had a massive gap to, to fall. So I was thinking, this is lovely. Just get into the get into the uh, get into the rhythm and go. Um, and then the tyres started going. And it just got a little bit loose coming out of four. I tapped the wall, and then it sucked me in, and it was all just downhill from there. And then I, I decided, well, I'm, I'm probably not going to win this now. So let's try and do some strategy, considering I've got no knowledge of NASCAR strategy whatsoever. <laughs> so that didn't go well. And then towards the end, I just got caught up in a few dramas and a few racing incidents. So, yeah, no, look, it was it was fun. It was fun, that's to say the least. Going up, down, up, down, up, down, <laughs> trying to trying to make some uh, make some undercuts, some overcuts, whatever. But no, it was definitely definitely a good race. Messy, but good. I mean, I've I've uh, I've commentated on you uh, in the legends uh, in in the real world and what have you, and 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 there's a lot of synergy there that I could see tonight was that you may have suddenly found yourself falling back down that field, but you then just have that patience and just sort of like the the the, the, the mental fortitude to kind of go, that's fine, park it. I'm still going to be able to pick my way through this. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Which is why I took the late pit stop. I knew I was quick on. on on new tyre like I say when the tyres start to drop away that's where we seem to struggle um, I knew I was quick on, on, on new tyre and I knew I've got the confidence just to stick it there and, and make some overtakes especially around a, a track like like Kansas I mean I've never done a race like this where, you, where the outside is quicker that's completely foreign to me the outside <laughs> of a corner is, is quicker and, and that just doesn't make sense to me but I started to get used to it but yeah like it, it's not it's a long race 100 laps there's, there's more you don't need to throw it away in the first 10 15 even, even 50 laps you know, things can happen. We had a few green white checkers at the end and a few late yellows. Anything can happen. So it's, it is just like you say, just don't worry, don't stress. It's only a game, but <laughs> you take it very seriously, but still just yeah. chill. Chill and crack on, do the job. It didn't work out for us today, but, you know, we might turn up in the next round, do something a bit similar and it might work. Just got to roll the dice, haven't you? 
Absolutely, and we I just loved watching that backwards and forwards. It was just great. So feel free to do that again next time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're going to give me extra points for going back and then forwards, then definitely. <laughs> yeah. But there we go. I don't think it works like that. Not quite. No, <laughs> no. I think Chaz, I think you should uh, you should request that because it certainly gave us the entertainment we wanted, didn't it? Oh yeah, I that mean, was uh, mega. Yeah, I'll, I'll happily, you know, like you say, in the Legends racing, I'm used to used to starting off the back the way they run their championship. Yeah. Is you, you, the the better you do for it at the day, the further towards the back you you start. You know, <laughs> yeah. we've won races from 17th in a 10 lap race around Brands. So if you want to put me at the back, give me double points. I will uh, more than happily take that, <laughs> especially around a road course. <laughs> Hang on, I'm just writing the email up to Alex now. Yeah, so um, yeah, let me let's have a let's have a meeting afterwards, and I'll reword it all for you. And Put the uh, poll up on Facebook, everyone vote for it. Oh yeah, <laughs> damn right. But um, no, in all, in all seriousness, Connor, again, another great drive through. Um, despite the uh, the little sort of hindrances along the way, it was great, great fun. And um, obviously, reigning champion going into the first round, not the worst of starts for your season. Not quite what you wanted, I imagine. But you'll get that win this season, won't you? You owe me that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hope so. It's a lot longer this season, um, a lot, lot, lot longer. So it gives us a chance to, and we've got a drop round. So I'm not too, too, uh, too upset with that. If we have another one like that next round, then I might have a little cry to myself. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think we'll be all right. And like you say, I, I, I need that, I need that actual race win. We've got a championship win, which usually is the hardest bit. <laughs> so we just need to get the actual race win now. So we'll see. Um, but I reckon on a road course, we'll get it hooked up and we'll go from there. Well, let's see what you can do, eh? Um, just before we let you go, though, mate, anyone you want to give a shout-out to? Uh, just the boys at, boys at Vertex putting on another great, great event. Um, the guys at Satellite Racing have been giving me some tips going into this on the old oval, so that's been great. Big thanks to those two guys. And, yeah, that's it. That's it for me. And obviously you, Chaz and Chris, thanks for commentating. I'm going to watch it back now. I'm sure it's a, I'm sure it's a blast. <laughs> um, and I hope you got the uh, got the massive sideways moment on broadcast that I had about ten laps to the end. I think we might have done. Yeah, there was a, there was yeah, a couple yeah. of them as well. So <laughs> you, you might have been included <laughs> in there, to be honest. But um, yeah, great as always, though, Connor. Thanks for coming in and chatting Brilliant. to us, and we'll uh, see you next Cheers, time. Cheers, guys. See you next time. Bye bye. Cheers, mate. Connor Mills there, reigning champion, very, very, uh, very top bloke as well. And this is what I mean, I was saying it before, wasn't I, Chris, that there's so many great characters in this season and it's a really, really nice community to have brought together by this championship. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you feel it every time we get someone different in. It's, it's all the same. I mean, that said, for those who don't know, I'm not going to give any details, but watching the chat between them, it's as we said, is that, yes, it's fun, but there was a serious bit of sort of like going, calling people out on certain bits during that race. So it, it, it's just lovely seeing that mix of the fun, but serious racing as well. Yeah, definitely. It's what you want from a championship. You want people to still take it seriously enough that, you know, if something hasn't gone their way, they'll show their displeasure about it and they'll mm. speak to the necessary people, get it involved and the tempers flare but it's motorsport and it's yeah. the drama that we all know and love and I think without that it wouldn't be a, a, a proper series but um, just to round it up then mate any final thoughts from you? Uh, I, I just love that uh probably about as much as I was expecting it was I, I had a feeling it was going to be incredible it was thoroughly entertaining um I, I just so excited about about more of these to go I enjoyed the overall element to see the difference between the high line the low line all of that sort of stuff but of course we throw it out the window and we've even got uh, uh, road courses and everything to do as well yet what a season we got ahead of us yeah, it's going to be an incredible, incredible championship. And don't forget, everybody, same time next week on Wednesday night, 7.45 p.m. BST. We will be back with you. Chris and I will be in the box for the entirety of the season. Really, really looking forward to it. And tonight has just sealed how well we work together, I think, to be honest. Um, Loved it, mate. It's going to be a great championship. Guillaume Hesno takes the win in the Kansas 150 in the Vertex Stock Car Cup at the beginning of Season 2. Join me and Chris next week. We'll see you there. Have a great evening.